So the recording has started. Okay, everyone, this is uh, a very uh, important day. We've got some new members um, and um, we have some uh, people dropping out today. So um, I'd like to go ahead and start uh, with um, Cynthia. Would you like to take roll, please? I will. Um, just real quickly, I'm trying to promote Adrianita to panelist and it won't work. Can you, you try it on try your it? end, Ray? Let me try. Yeah, Pat, yeah, Pat still can't get on. I've tried several times. I don't know what the problem is. There are different ways, too. Anna, is he clicking join? Yeah. On the agenda on the web page. I've done on. this a lot of times. This is yeah. not working. Yeah, he's done that. All, he did he did it both ways. Yeah, because I did it from my phone and I was able to. Yeah, it's weird. Well, obviously people are doing it because we've got 17 attendees. Oh. Hey, I, I too am having a problem with Adrianita being promoted, it appears. So has to be something at her end on the phone. Or in her area of her community, maybe. Armando's over there too. Let me try Armando. Okay, it looks like Armando is over. Mr. Chair, could you forward her the email invitation to join as a panelist? Maybe that would help. I'm right here. This is Armando, I'm here. We have you. Adrianita, maybe you could try logging out and logging back in because we're not able to move you to panelists. Like a reset. Sometimes that works. That's what I had to do. Mm -hmm. You want to go ahead and start, Ray? I don't see her there. That's. Uh... Meeting number idea again. Um, eight, eight, six, five, nine, eight, two, five, one, nine, three. Okay. Um, I think we should start. Um, Cynthia, would you like to take the role, please? Okay. Armando Balderrama. Here. John Barbera. Here. Victor Christensen. Here. Maya da uh, Danala. Denola. Denola. Here. Denola. Denola, thank you. Here. I only make it make the mistake once. John DeMeglio. <laughs> Here. Dan Dixon. Here. Craig Goldfarb. Here. Cynthia Gagne is here. Christian Guzman. Here. Gwen Henry. Present. Melanie Lebec. Lebec. Here. Kelly Miller. Here. Angela Sumner. Here. Chris Valle. Here. Alec Norman. Here. And Andrianita Cruz is here, or she here. will be. There she is. Okay, Mr. President, we have everybody here. Okay, you want to make sure that uh, both uh, 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 Lori and myself are shown as present because oh, okay. we're still part of it. Okay. Part, at least. Is Mary Chan going to make it? No. So, okay, uh, can you move up the, the, the agenda, please? Lori? There we go. Okay, well, kind of the same thing. I'll, I'll just remind people that we have uh, some uh, people who are gonna be speaking, will speak for two minutes and 
Uh, you're gonna, if you need to say, uh, you want to say something additional, would be after everyone's had an opportunity to say what they want. And uh, I think we're sort of all up to date with all our training, uh, except for the newer people. So uh, don't forget your training, newer people. <laughs> so if you don't mind, I'd like to take a couple of minutes just to kind of say that this is my last meeting uh, in, in neighborhood council capacity. And I'm gonna tell you that the nine years that I've been part of the neighborhood council, along with the uh, fact that, you know, the opportunity to be your president for eight years has been really rewarding for me. I have to be after the opportunity to get to know a lot of great people. I really, really am um, excited that over the course of these past years, we've had a very diverse group uh, when it comes to gender, when it comes to uh, race, cultures, ethnicities, age, and things like that. I think Northwest has been always on top of that. It's been a great opportunity to serve with all of you. And I'm, I'll tell you, I'm really, this past year, really excited that we've had some very engaging young people, Adrianita, Alexander. Let this thing just keep on going. Your, your participation in the community is really important. And it's going to just serve you so well as you move forward. So um, keep it going, you guys. And that's, it's made me really happy to, to be able to work with both of you. Um, I, I want to remind, especially for the new people, that North uh, Neighborhood Council work is tough work. You know, no matter how many hours people say that you're going to be there, or you're going to put into this thing, it's going to be a lot more. So just be prepared. <laughs> It's going to be a lot more, um, but it's really rewarding because you're going to be able to get a, a, an aspect of what your community is really made up of. And I think uh, for those people on the attendee side who might be outside of Northwest San Pedro, I'm going to say it. Uh, Northwest San Pedro has, is a great community. San Pedro is a great community. And um, as I'm, as I've been on, person here in the community now for well over 20 years. Um, I, I just find it a, an adventure every time to be able to take a ride by the water. You know, it's just minutes away to be able to go out there and, and meet new people and see all the different cultural aspects of this community. It's really exciting. I want to also remind, especially the new people, that approaching the work is... Uh, is something that I think you need to be aware of the fact that it'll serve you if you're not doing the work with the expectation that you're gonna get a pat on the back, because you won't. You're gonna be open for criticism. You're gonna be open for uh, scrutiny. Uh, you'll be uh, um, probably the focus of some people's congratulations, but you know, it happens the other way too. So know that also. Um, I think it's important to also say that knowing your community is really important and knowing your community means that you've got to get out and join in, in everything that happens around you. Um, Northwest, we have some great events that puts us in different areas. You know, it puts us, you know, we've had movies in the park. We've had, um, uh, uh, we've done some great uh, uh, sustainability work up with Wildfest. I was just going to say that, Glenn. I, so we've had, you know, Wildfest where we participated in the holiday uh, um, parade, which I think is really cool because lately we've been able to ride in one of the uh, trolleys. And, you know, it's really an exciting thing to, to be part of. Uh, so get involved, continue your involvement, because um, that's how you're going to understand your community. Um, leadership in your community, leadership period uh, is not something that you bargain for, that you go out and negotiate for and things like that. Uh, leadership is something that you earn. So to earn it, that means that you have to get out there and be part of it so people can recognize who you are. Um, Part of that leadership development is being able to understand your community. You're not, you're not 
in your neighborhood council board to represent your personal agenda. You're there actually to represent the community as a whole, the people who elected you. That's your obligation. So make sure that, that that's something that is really a part of your life now to be able to go out there and really look at what it is that uh, you're doing for your community and how you're best representing it. Um, it's uh, it, it'll the experience will will serve you will serve you well. Um, but I like to take it to the next level. Something that I've experienced, you know, as president and whoever uh, is president uh, in a little while. Um, remember that not only are you representing your community, but you're also representing the board. And the board deserves a good, strong leader that's going to represent them. And uh, sometimes that means that you're going to have to actually hold your, your opinions to yourself because as a, as a uh, uh, facilitator, because that's what it amounts to as being president or vice president or any one of these elected uh, uh, positions, you're, you're, um, you sometimes have to hold what you feel aside so that you make sure that you're representing the people who you represent. So keep that in mind. Remember, leadership is earned. It's not bargained for. It's earned. Um, I really want to thank you all for um, the time I've spent with you. I've, it's really been important to me. It's uh, been probably the, the best years of the best experience in my life being able to work with you all, every single one of you. It, it's been great, and I hope to continue to do that. And um, I want to just say thank you and uh, good luck to all of you. Um, so, Lori, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Thanks. Thank you, Ray. Thanks, Ray. Thank you for that. So, yeah. first of all, I just want to say it's been an honor and a privilege to serve for nine years on this board. I've learned so much. And I want to say welcome to Angela, Maya, Vic, and Christian. I think you're going to bring some fresh new ideas, um, which we need desperately. Um, for me, I want to take a moment to thank a few people specifically that have made such a difference to me and to our community. I want to thank Christina Smith for all the work that she has done with the website, with email pack, with board packets, everything she's done. She is the nicest person on this entire earth. Um, I want to thank Cheryl Ackerblom for all her years of uh, detailed minute taking and taking the time to learn the processes so she could be a, an effective minute taker. I want to thank Doug Everhart from the Coastal Neighborhood Council who has mentored me in my desperate moments. How do I do this? How do I do that? You know, um, and on our, our board currently, oh, and, and Darlene Zavalny, who um, I worked with and we had a great time doing outreach, you know, great person on our board. Um, uh, Chris Valle, um, I've really enjoyed working with you. John Barbera, my next door neighbor, and my, my brother from another mother, and, and Melanie, who's just been the superstar treasurer, relentless, detail-oriented um, person who's made our life easier. I don't think people have any idea how much work she does behind the scenes um, to make things happen. And these people need to be recognized. Diana Nave, who... Um, it just has also been a great mentor and, and puts up with my millions of questions. How do I do this? You know, can we do that? And, and so just very valuable. Her experience um, on the board before me was extremely valuable. And of course, I would be amiss if I didn't mention Ray Regalado. And we were a well-oiled team. We were able to work together so compatibly and we have different approaches to things. Um, he's just been such a great leader. Um, I look up to him so much the way he approaches things with his patience and diligence and wanting to understand and follow all the rules. And of course, he's still going to be our commissioner for quite a while. So thank you to all these people, um, other neighborhood councils. I appreciate the opportunities that I've had to, to meet them, government elected officials, the Port of LA. Um, and I just kind of want to talk about moving forward. Ray talked about leadership. I want to talk about teamwork and collaboration. It's really important. We've got to get past this finger pointing and um, personalities. That's not what this is about. This is about the Northwest San Pedro neighborhood. And somehow, sometimes 
um, that gets lost. And, and I hope that with the, with the fresh new faces and the experience we have here that you'll mentor each other and start to work more as a team. We can always have differences of opinion. In fact, we should. I don't want a board of everybody who agrees with me and yes people. I need somebody who's gonna challenge me and show me other points of view. We, we need that, but we need to find a way to do it respectfully always. And um, I will tell you that I'm very proud of the work that the outreach team has done over the last few years. I'm, I'm not ashamed to brag that I think Pathways to Employment has been an amazing event. Um, you all know how much youth means to me um, in, in mentoring them and making opportunities for, you know, I wish it was there when I was, was around. So I hope that will be carried on. The newsletters, Christina has just been amazing. We have weekly e-blast newsletters to keep our neighbors informed as much as possible. And then hard copy newsletters for those who may not be online. We have to try and do everything we can to reach as many neighbors as possible. And the last thing is, I want everybody to remember that the work is done on the committee level. So yes, you need to be there at the board meeting, but you need to get involved in the committee. That's where you're gonna dissect and evaluate and look at issues in great detail. And then we bring it to the board and be prepared. Read the supporting documents before you get to the board meeting. Ask questions. Um, we're all here to, to help each other, but we, and we need to recruit people to be on the committees because those will be future board members too. But we wanna have as many voices as possible on these committees. So we're truly representing as much of our Northwest San Pedro neighborhood that we can. So again, thank you so much for those that have been so supportive over the years. Um, I would welcome the opportunity to continue with the great outreach work that we're doing and look forward if I do have that opportunity to work with the new people. So thank you and um, best of luck to everybody. Thank you, Lori. Um, so let's uh, move on to the uh, important piece and that is the swearing in of uh, uh, individuals, the new board. And so I would like to um, ask Octaviano. Octaviano, I'm going to promote you to, uh, what happened to my screen? There we go. I'm gonna promote you to a panelist so that you can be part of this meeting here. Just give me a second. Let's see. Was oh. I, I, I don't have the oath of office. Was I supposed to have that up here? Octaviano, I think, uh, said that he would bring it. Okay, great. Then I'll stop oh, yeah, sharing my screen. Okay, so he can now do that. Octaviano, you with us? I am here. Let me, uh, let me see if I can turn on my video. That's not you. He emailed it to everybody, too. You can print it out. If he's going to screen share, he'll need to be made a co-host. Well, you don't, you don't get the treat of my pink uh, shirt and my uh, scruffy <laughs> uh, beard. So something, uh, you know, I, we just upgraded our uh, software for our computer. And lo and behold, I should have tested it before I jumped on. <laughs> so um, I promised to show you my... Uh, my, my face next time, uh, new board members, but for the uh, continuing and outgoing, uh, you know how I look like. So, <laughs> so uh, thank you, uh, Ray and Lori and the rest of the folks. Uh, my name is Octaviano Rios. I'm with the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. Um, I don't think we have to uh, show the actual oath unless you want to. Uh, I can certainly try to I, I found it if you want me to share it. Oh yeah, go ahead. And I was just gonna have folks. Uh, let me let me give it a whack here. Thank you, Lori. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Hey, Lori, try not to say the word whack. That's a Sicilian thing, please. <laughs> oh, you're hilarious. All right, awesome. So uh, we have folks that are continuing on. And then we have uh, new board members that are new to the board. I want uh, everybody to commit and recommit to the, uh, to the system and to your neighborhood council. So I'd like to 
have everybody raise your right hand. Don't stand because then we're going to see your stomach and that's not, uh, I don't think that's what uh, we all want to have as a first impression as, as new board members. Uh, are, are all the board members uh, showing their video or, or are we just having them uh, voice uh, the, the oath here? They should see everything. Yeah, except when we're sharing the screen, of course, then it's... Uh... Okay. So it's my honor to, uh, to seat you all for the first time. So this will be the Neighborhood Council Board Member Oath. Please raise your hand, continuing and new uh, board members. Uh, I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. To represent my neighborhood. To represent my neighborhood. To represent my neighborhood. <laughs> with dignity, integrity, and pride. With dignity, with dignity, with dignity, dignity, dignity integrity, integrity, and pride. pride. And pride. <laughs> I will encourage other points of view. I will I will encourage other points, other points of view. view. Even when they differ from my own. Even, Even when they differ, differ, differ from my own. From now. I will respect, value, and consider. I will, I will respect, respect, value, value and, and consider. consider. Everyone's opinion. Everyone's, Everyone's opinion. opinion. I will find the good in my neighborhood. I will, I will find, find the, the good in my, in my neighborhood. neighborhood. And praise it and promote it. And, and praise, praise it, it, it and promote it. Missed a section there. To yes. this, the paragraph the before was missed. That's the long version. It's brevity. There's brevity to it this time. Yeah, we got different versions. Sorry, folks. This is the, the, the version we've been holding. Oh, look, okay. we're already Excellent. ruining the glamorous part here. <laughs> <laughs> last, uh, last sentence. To my neighborhoods and to neighborhoods throughout the city of Los Angeles. To my to neighborhoods, neighborhoods and to the neighborhoods throughout the city of Los Angeles. And to the neighborhoods throughout the city of Los Angeles. I pledge to do this to the best of my ability. I pledge, I pledge, to, pledge to do this, this to the best, best of my, of my ability. ability. Congratulations, everybody. You are now the new administration for the Northwest San Pedro Neighborhood Council. Thank you all for your focus and commitment. And feel free to reach out to me and anybody in the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment with any questions or concerns. And then I'll reserve my announcements and updates for the appropriate section. Thank you all. Congratulations Thank again. You, Thank, you. Thank you, Octaviano. Thank you, Octaviano. Thank you. So we'll move on to the next section. Thank you, Octaviano. By the way, I, uh, we really appreciate the, uh, the work that you've done for us and you continue to do for us and, uh, and helping us out this, uh, this evening. Thank you. Uh, our next one will be the elections of executive officers. Uh, on the screen, you'll be able to see what, uh, what they are and uh, what their uh, function is. And uh, I'm happy to say that Diana uh, Nave will be handling this section. That, let me tell you about Diana. Diana has been with the uh, Neighborhood Council uh, since its inception. She was, uh, if I, if I, uh, if I uh, get this wrong, Diana, uh, please correct me, but uh, she was uh, part of the planning, if, if, uh, planning of Neighborhood Council in the very beginning. So she has a very long history with, with the group, uh, with the system, with the uh, whole construct of what uh, civic engagement is all about. She also is chair of our bylaws and elections committee, which she put a lot of time in the pr uh, producing our bylaws, helping us get our bylaws to the perfect place that it is. And also, you know, uh, making sure that our elections are uh, run uh, with, uh, without any hiccups. And she's done a fantastic job over the years. So um, I'm really happy that Diana indicated that she, uh, or uh, agreed to be able to uh, stand in and, and actually uh, start the election for our new uh, executive officers. So Diana, would you be so kind? Sure, thank, thank you, Ray. Um... And yeah, we'll talk about some of the hiccups later in the meeting when it gets to the bylaws and elections committee <laughs> report time. But um, first of all, I just want to congratulate all of the newly elected board members and welcome aboard to, to, to Northwest and, and all of you re-elected board members. And I want to thank Ray and thank Lori for the leadership that they've provided for the last eight, nine, however many years it's been. Um, 
So for those of you that are new, the officers of the board are elected by the board from among the board members. And they're done at the first meeting after um, new members are installed. So the terms for the officers you elect tonight, they're one year terms and they will actually end in June of 2022. Our bylaws spell out the process for the election of the board members. Candidates for an office can be nominated by another board member or they can nominate themselves. So if you're interested in running, you're free to nominate yourself. Um, a second is not required for a nomination. Because we are subject to the Brown Act, all of the voting is done, um, will be done by a roll call vote, <laughs> unless there's only one candidate and then we just, we, you know, we just take a, a vote by, by voice. In order to be elected, you have to receive the majority of the votes cast. If there are more than two candidates and no candidate receives a majority, a second vote will be taken between the two highest vote getters. There's an interesting um, thing that we amended into our bylaws to take care of a tie. And that says that the highest ranking officer remaining on the board and not running for president shall abstain from voting for the office of president unless there's a tie. So in this case, that happens to be Cynthia as, as secretary. She is the highest ranking board member remaining on the board. So when we vote for president, Cynthia will be asked to abstain. Once a new president is selected, that person then has to abstain from voting for the other three offices, unless again, there's a tie, in which case that person would be asked to um, vote. So we'll take nominations for each office. Um, and once the nominations close for an office, then the candidates will each be given up to two minutes to speak. After that, we will take any public comments and, and board comments before proceeding to a vote. So with that, the first office that we'll consider is the Office of President. And as you can see, the President's responsible for soliciting items, preparing the agenda, and presiding at the meetings, creating the committees and appointing the chairs with the concurrence of the board. Um, also appoints the members with the concurrence of the board, acts as a spokesperson and representative of the board, receives all the communications and presents them to the board. And the board then determines what items should be, and then determines what items should be posted on the website or can delegate that responsibility to another officer. And I think that was delegated to Lori in the last few years. The president also is in charge of enforcing the bylaws. So with that, I'll open the floor for nominations. Um, and if you want to nominate someone, if you would raise your hand, um, it would be helpful. Chris, I see Chris first and then Cynthia. I would like to nominate uh, Christian Guzman for president. Yay, there we go. Thank you. Christian, do you accept? Yes, I accept it. Okay. Um, Cynthia? I would like to nominate Craig Goldfarb, and I'd like to make a statement on his behalf. Uh, you can make a statement in a while. But okay. now we're taking the nominations. Um, so we have... Okay. Okay, would um, anybody else like to make a nomination of themselves or anybody else and help me if I miss a hand here because I don't you know if you could take that because I can't see everyone at once did Craig did Craig accept oh Craig did you accept I'm sorry Craig yes I accept okay sorry I was trying to You're on the beach um, I do not see any more hands so with that, the nominations for president are closed. Um, so the next thing would be that each candidate would be allowed to make um, a statement of up to two minutes. And unless there's an objection, I'll just take them in the order they were nominated, which means the first one would be Christian Guzman. And I believe Melanie's keeping the time. Mm -hmm. Christian, did you make a statement? When we're, we're not hearing you. Christian? Once he starts, I'll not start timing him. Oh my god. Where is he? I think he dropped out. I think something happened. He got oh. bumped off. He got bumped off. Well, yeah, okay. I got bumped off earlier, and so yeah. I have to rejoin. Okay, then we'll ask. 
Craig, Craig, do you want to start? Am I allowed to make the statement before he gives his if I'm nominating him? No, you're going to make the statement after he gives his. That was the order that. Christian's okay. back. But you will certainly have the opportunity to make your statement. Right. Okay, that's fine. I was just wondering when. Yeah. She's back. Hmm? Christian's back. She said. Oh, Christian's back? Yes, he's back. Okay, Christian. I guess <laughs> let's start with you, Christian. You have up to two minutes to make a statement. Oh, okay. I think my internet just cut out. I thought everyone's did. Well, I definitely believe in the grassroots democracy and the neighborhood council is an excellent vehicle for a grassroots democracy. I've been on the neighborhood council in the past. I've been a minute taker as well for this neighborhood council and other neighborhood councils. So I have experience with how the neighborhood council system works. I really do like listening to various points of view and various people. I think that that allows our democratic system to be more informed and for us to reach the best decision for the sake of the public. And if I were to be elected president, it would be my responsibility to serve the board and the public. And as former President Regalado said, it would not be about pushing my agenda. It would be about serving you all. Okay, thank you, Christian. Um, Craig, Craig Goldfarb. Craig, you're muted. I know that. Sometimes it takes a while. This is not the <laughs> fastest thing in the world. Thank you. Anyways, just to start this off, I'm a 25 year resident of Northwest San Pedro. I regularly walk and ride my bike and drive through this neighborhood, our neighborhoods, and I see what's going on and legitimately participate in our, in the process. What I would do as president is I would preside at meetings to run meetings, not to advance my personal agenda, hoping to advance discussion and not to suppress different opinions. In this respect, I would only vote to break a tie and not express an opinion unless asked by the board. Even my view of the president is not to work, is to work with you to achieve the board's initiatives, to provide you with written reports on my meetings with the city, the port and other council presidents of what we met on and any outcomes and seek your feedback as a board and the visual and the individual committees. In, may, in my view, we need to concentrate our efforts on re-empowering the board to positively affect change in our neighborhoods, such as neighborhood cleanups, active support of our parks and schools. How about getting the Peck Park pool reopened, actively addressing health and safety issues, such as vaccination clinics and safety fairs, encouraging and in facilitating cert certifications. Many of these things have been dropped off the board over the years to do things and activities that have nothing to do with Northwest San Pedro. Northwest San Pedro, our stakeholders need us now more than ever. And we need people that are members and part of Northwest San Pedro to facilitate this. Regardless of the outcome, I hope Craig, that we work that, on- I believe that was time, Craig. Was that time, Melanie? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Regardless of the outcome, I hope we work on re-emphasizing Northwest San Pedro and its needs. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Craig. Okay, with that, we'll open the floor and I will first recognize Cynthia since she's already indicated. Anyone who wants to speak, please signify by raising your hand. But let's start with Cynthia. Okay, um, this council has recently elected a number of new board members. And right now the board needs stability. Craig has eight years of experience on this board previously and we were successful then. He was on the port committee, the land and land use and planning committee, where he helped the successful negotiation of target and Punta Vista development. He was a treasurer and the budget advocate. 
and set up our present budget reporting system. He chaired the issues committee. Craig physically lives in and knows our neighborhood. We need new leadership and we will have that in Craig. Thank you. Oh, I saw another hand. I do not see anyone else wish to speak. I do, on my, my hand and Lori. I Lori. Well, I was first. Uh, who? Gwen. Gwen. Don't. All right, Gwen. I actually have a question for both. Both. Uh, uh, let's let's finish the um, the statements then first, and then we'll see if there's any questions. Um, so, Lori, were you raising to make a statement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. But at some point, I think I'm not supposed to be a panelist. I'm supposed to be an attendee because um, the swearing in already happened. But um, um, yes, so my statement is um, uh, we do need leadership. And I think Christian has already demonstrated many times his leadership qualities. Um, I'm very puzzled by hearing from Craig all these things that he's so concerned about, yet he hasn't shown up at any of our meetings in the last four years to bring any of these topics up. He hasn't shown up at committee meetings. So why all of a sudden now he cares about the community, but he hasn't been there to bring these topics to us. So we could have discussed them. That dis that very much concerns me. Thank you. Gwen, you said you have a question for each of the two. I do, yes. Um, as a board member, especially in the first years, um, I, I derived, I received a lot of, uh, a, pre, a lot of, uh, um, I, I use the president as a role model in order to see how we conduct ourselves on the board. Um, so I would like to ask each member or each, each uh, of the candidates, we do have new members and uh, how will you be a good role model for these new members and as well as how will you deal with uh, combative subjects or um, discussions that get heated? And what is your past experience on the executive board and how will you apply it there? There's three questions. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So Melanie, you're, you're keeping times, right? Yeah. Okay, um, I'm gonna switch it this time and let Craig go first since we had Christian go first last time. Craig, there you are. So I, I've had various experience. I, as, you, as you know, I was treasurer for four years. Though I didn't lead meetings, I led um, committees. But I also was in the, in the five of the last, uh, last, before COVID, I was president of the men's club and a board member at um, congregation near Tom Mead. So I'm very familiar with dealing with situations uh, on boards where these kind of thing happens. And it just takes patience and a, a lot of work. People have to understand that we're all adults and we have to be related to as adults. The, the backbiting, the microaggressions and has to end. And people have to step up and do that. It, I can't make you people do that, but I think that the community has spoken about the, what they wanted and what they didn't want. Thank you, Greg. Christian, 10 questions. Yeah, I definitely believe in the saying, be the change you want to see. And regardless of what it is, whether it be environmentalism or sustainability or freedom of speech, I try to observe the behavior that I would like to see in others first and foremost and be a model. I do have previous share experience on the Central San Pedro Neighborhood Council. I was also the secretary for that neighborhood council. And I also chaired the sustainability committee at one point <clears throat> and also participated jointly with the Northwest Sustainability Committee for a couple of years where I think I was mentored by Sarah Valdez and Gwen for a time. I think we definitely learned from each other. And I really like to speak to other people and to foster various skills because I think different people have different 
talents that can be brought out and improved and <clears throat> recognized. And I would like to work with the entire board and also learn from the entire board. And I really look forward to being a part of this council. Thank you, Kristen. So seeing, seeing no other hands, I'm going to um, take the vote. And Cynthia, are you prepared to call roll or do you want me to do it? How do you want to I'm do I'm okay, it? I can do it. Okay. Um, so when Cynthia calls your name, just say whether you want to vote for Christian or for Craig. Okay, Armando Balderrama. Uh, Craig. Craig. John Barbera. Christian. Victor Christensen. Christian. Maya Danola. Christian. I didn't John DeMeglio. Oh, I, I didn't catch what Maya said. He said Christian, I believe. Okay. John DeMeglio. Craig. Dan Dixon. Christian. Can Greg, Craig vote for himself? That's right, he can vote, right? Can vote. Craig Goldfarb. Craig. I abstain. Cynthia abstains. Christian Guzman. I vote for Christian. <laughs> okay. Gwen Henry. Christian. Melanie Labreck. Christian. Kelly Miller. Christian. Angela Sumner. Sorry, I muted. Christian. Christian Valle. Chris Valle. Christian. Alec Norman. Christian. And Andrea Anita Cruz. Christian. Twelve for Christian and three for Craig. Congratulations, Christian. Um, Thank you, you're the president. Thank you. I look forward to serving you all. If, uh, well, that means on the next three, Christian, you don't get to vote. Uh, and Cynthia uh, does. Di um, Diana. Yes. I'm going to transfer uh, hosting privileges to Christian. Oh, okay. You can be doing that while I go ahead with the next office. So the next office is the office of vice president and the vice president performs the duties of the president in the absence of the president or when asked to do so by the president. The vice president assists the president in deciding what issues or problems may require a special emergency meeting and coordinates the work of committees and tracks items of interest to the council. What I'm reading are the things that our bylaws say these offices do. The work has been divided up a little bit differently among the existing board um, and they can tell you how they did it. But this is what the bylaws require for, from the vice president. So at this time, I will open nominations for vice president. I'd to? like to nominate um, please, please, Cynthia please. Gainway. Cynthia? Yes. No, do you accept? I'll accept. Okay. Uh, Gwen, your hands raised? Yes, I, I would like to nominate Chris Valle. Chris Valle. Chris, do you accept? I accept, yeah, he accepts. Don Barbera, did I see your hand? I'm good. Okay. Anybody else want to? nominate either themselves or somebody else for vice president. Seeing no hands, the um, nominations for vice president are closed and we have two, um, Cynthia Gagne and Chris Valle. So we will allow each candidate to make a statement of up to two minutes and Melanie will let you know or let us know when your time is up. Um, and we'll start with Cynthia. Okay, I've been a um... A member of this community for 22 years. I came here with the government having spent um, 33 years with the government and I retired here. And I've been volunteering 
since I've retired with this council and I've enjoyed it very much, especially when I've been secretary, I enjoyed getting the letters and delivering them to the people. And I enjoy working with the committees and getting the letters out to our representatives so they can hear our voices. And they, the letters that we do send out are powerful. So we know our voice is powerful. And I know I can serve well as a vice president under Guzman, and I think we would be a very good uh, council. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Christian? Uh, Chris? Thanks. Hi, uh, yes. Uh, I see the role as defined in our bylaws, uh, Vice President, as supporting um, the mission of the president, and therefore of the, the entire board. And I feel like um, my contribution to the executive committee and to the board generally uh, would be to maintain the, the very high standards that have been set by uh, our outgoing president and vice president, by uh, board members like uh, Diana mm -hmm. and Dan, and basically all of the people who've done like countless hours of hard work to give Northwest Neighborhood um, Council um, a very high uh, standard of operation and a very high uh, level of regard uh, across the city in, in San Pedro. And I see it as a responsibility essentially uh, for me to, to volunteer and, and do the best job that I can to see that our, our meetings and our events and the board itself basically um, recognizes the standards that have been set, looks at the opportunities we have to continue uh, and expand you know, the, the work that we've done. Um, and so you know, really it's about me uh, taking a more direct personal responsibility for the things that I've tried to help on uh, the last uh, five years um, and look for new ways to, to move that forward uh, in, in collaboration with all of you and with the President Guzman. Thank you. Um, did anyone want to make a comment before I take the vote? Yes. Uh, I, I'll, I'll let you make a comment, Craig, but let me, let me ask in the future to raise your hand. I just did. Yeah, he did. He raised his hand, I saw. <laughs> okay, if you're not going to pay attention, then, <laughs> you know, don't, don't caution people. Oh, uh, okay. I, I, I'm actually talking about using the raised hand function, um, and maybe that's with uh, the miscommunication. Well, then make it clear. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Cynthia, as she said, she's been in San Pedro for, for since 1998. She's been, she's been an army officer, officer an FBI senior agent, homely, Homeland Security special agent. She retired with 33 years of public service. She, she was a survivor of the Oklahoma City bombing. She's volunteered for LA C City's crisis response team for 12 years. She operates cameras at her church's service. She is an officer of the Board of San Pedro Homeowners United and she's a ham operator, radio operator. She has served Northwest San Pedro since 2010. She has been on committees, executive committees. She has been supporting this board and the president for years. I mean, I must say that Chris Vallier has been on board. I don't even think he's run a committee, but support and let's go forward. Thank you. Um, next is Maya and then Gwen. Maya? Yes. Uh, sorry, we are at the question stage, not the comment stage? Are you? Well, we're at the comment stage. I, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll hold because I have a question rather than a comment. Okay. Uh, and Gwen? Henry? Gwen Henry? Uh, I believe there was one more person who wanted to make a comment, did you say? You were the only other person I saw besides it was a, Maya. It was a question. It was a question. So, okay, so we're taking questions in. Maya? Thank you. Um, so I'd like to know from each candidate how you see your role um, as moderating uh, conversations at the council meetings. If you can just speak a little bit to your um, idea of what that role is, how you intend to manage conflicts um, at these meetings as the vice president, if needed. So we'll start this time with Christian, Chris Vallier. Hi, thanks. 
Um, I think as we've just seen, as we've already seen in the process leading up to this meeting, uh, there, there are uh, people who take a personal angle and uh, a more critical and uh, you know, uh, confrontational approach in these uh, proceedings. And I think the bedrock of what we do are the rules. We have rules written down that are relatively easy to follow. And they, they sort of, they, they give us a pretty strong framework and a pretty strong set of boundaries, um, not only as to how we should, you know, proceed about our business as a board, but in terms of our conduct and the, the manner in which we speak to one another. Um, and so we, we start there. And then, you know, everyone's got to add their own personal interpretation of, of uh, what they think a, a respectful demeanor and, uh, uh, and discourse should be, but it starts, I think, with courtesy and kindness and, and mutual respect. Um, it's, it's, it's easy to start a fight. It's very difficult to finish one and you don't get any work while this is in the, in the, in the midst of it. So you know, we have work to do. Um, and I think staying focused on that and using the rules as a framework in which to do the work is, is really the only way forward. Thank you, Christian. Cynthia, same question. Uh, I've been on the board for a long time, uh, 12 years, and I know we all come as adults. We come as volunteers. We're not being paid to do this job. So I think we all are serious about the job that is at hand, whether you're um, a chair or a committee member or um, even somebody that um, wants to become a member, that uh, people get involved and a lot of times when you get involved with an issue or an event, you're representing your area, your tract, and you might become excited. And sometimes you step out of the bounds. But I think, you know, just a gentle uh, prod, just to let them know that that's pushing it a little bit too far and that people will come back in. I think that uh, most of the people that I've ever talked to, I've never had any problems with anybody yelling uh, at me or, or trying to degrade me. So um, I think we, you know, will come as an adult and if something does happen, then it's up to the president to enforce the laws and, um, and I would back him and we would handle it um, at that time. And then we would move forward. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, Gwen, Thank you, you, had, you had a, a question? Yes, I do. Um, as vice president, uh, you will be taking over many of, you know, when needed, you'll be taking over duties of the president should they ha be absent for any reason. Uh, but also uh, often the role is to manage Zoom meetings. Do you have the technology experience to run a Zoom meeting? Do you have the uh, an email that functions in order to um, manage and distribute emails to the participating parties? And can you do the functions uh, based on our challenges of a technology uh, driven um, meeting currently? Um, please, you know. Okay, Cynthia, I'll let you go first. Okay. Um, I think everybody, when we started Zoom, hardly anybody really knew how to do Zoom and um, Lori and Ray and all of us were um, newbies at it and we learned. Anything can be learned. Um, I work the cameras at uh, my church. There's three of them, actually four now. And um, I bring them all together and I format that out into DVDs and CDDs to be distributed through the church, uh, especially the people that can't attend. So um, I know Zoom. And my computer, I have the functions. I have a brand new Dell, just got it three months ago. And it can handle sending out the email. So there should be no problem. I think I'll be fine. Christian, same question. Chris uh, thanks. Yeah, um, I have used online meetings and, and that sorts of uh, resources uh, pretty extensively, even beyond uh, the, the boundaries of the pandemic. But uh, as a uh, uh, media producer, I have a very high powered computer. I have a gigabit Ethernet connection. I uh, just set up a. Um, oh, we can't see it when I unplug it. But anyway, I have a, uh, a loop deck, which is basically a, a remote controller that um, uh, can automate all of our uh, Zoom functions. So there's uh, basically software connections for uh, all the meeting controls and stuff like that. Um, 
that's actually one of the parts of it that's I look at as as the easy part. Uh, I think the the people end of it is going to be the challenge and the you know the, the work end of it. But the uh, the media part is something I do almost literally all the time for fun. That's uh, that's good. Thank you, Christian. Um, Armando. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. 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 I, I have a question for both parties. Oh. Uh, what do they feel should be a, what should our next move be in regards to dealing with the homeless? Are, do you believe in a more progressive manner where we do like they did over there in Echo Park and have sweeps, logically do sweeps when there's nobody around and then reinforce the laws after we clear an area out? Or are you more of the codes are they going to pacify and, and allow these people to run our streets and scare our children from school and stuff? What line of approach are you trying to take? Okay, uh, Christian, Chris, Ballet. You know, it says Christian on the screen, so I keep calling you Christian. So. Yeah, Christian or Chris is fine, but I think I for, for, you know, you can call me Chris, it's good. Um, yeah, I don't think as vice president of the Northwest San Pedro Neighborhood Council, it'll be my call to decide how uh, laws will be enforced or how uh, individual civil liberties will be uh, uh, upheld or not. Um, I think as a board member, um, there's a balance that has to be struck that the current climate wherein there are overarching illegal decisions that uh, constrain you know, the potential for law enforcement or legislation with respect to unhoused people have to be balanced with what the, the uh, aims and the tone of any particular community have to be. That is, you know, if any one of us or any group of us are um, uh, take take the care of our fellow person as a mission, then we have to treat them as human be we have to treat them as human beings. Uh, deserving of respect and who are also protected under the law. And I do believe personally that you know, the way that the law applies to every one of us, um, when there is law in place, that the, the balance has to be struck by the people who actually have that responsibility. So my, my role, I think, on uh, the neighborhood council will be to get clarity and, um, and feedback from the agencies and the officials who are actually responsible for making those things happen. My end of it in terms of trying to be a good citizen and paying my taxes and voting, I think has already been held up. It's, it's, it's my part of it to go to people who actually have to make these policies happen, ask them, why isn't this working? Or what are you doing to, to achieve a different outcome than we've seen? It's a much bigger problem than a, than a neighborhood problem or a community problem. But my mission, I believe, is to try and advance the conversation to address the root causes of homelessness um, and to keep hammering the message home that big changes will have to happen before we can see small improvements. And there's no, you know, I, I, you know, taking individual responsibility is just the beginning. This is a huge, you know, societal, lifelong cultural effort that has to be carried on. And, you know, I'm just going to take the very smallest part of it if I'm elected to this post. Thank you, Christian. Cynthia, same question. Um, I think we have to be really sensitive with the homeless. A lot of them there because they lost their jobs and they lost their homes and they don't really want to be there. But on the other hand, we can't let them ruin our cities um, with the sewage um, and with graffiti and whatever else they might be doing if they're doing something illegal. Now, we don't enforce the laws. And even in our oath, uh, one of the parts that we skipped, it says that we're supposed to uphold our city and our county and our state laws. So we have, uh, we pay taxes and we've elected legislative people to make the decisions, uh, to do the research and find out what is the best way to handle the homeless in each community. Um, basically what we can do is offer our assistance if they need it, uh, whether it is to go out and take account or to have uh, a committee for the homeless and work with the city. But um, in the long run, it's, it's, it is a big, big issue and it's getting bigger. And with the economy, the way it's going, it's going to get even worse. So I think we're gonna have to be taking little steps, but if we go in a positive state, a positive direction and keep taking those little steps, I think we'll be able to 
uh, work through the homeless and get them jobs and get them homes. Okay, uh, Lou Carvella wants to make a comment. For those who don't know Lou, he is the president of the Central Neighborhood Council. Um, Christian, are you there? Christian? Uh-oh. Lori, can you let Lou speak? Are you still on as a co-host? Uh, yes. Yes, I just unmuted Lou. Okay. Lou? Uh, did you guys think this is Lou? This is Matthew Kyocho, actually, the vice president. Oh, oh okay. Sorry, I, I was on a meeting under his Zoom account, so I think it might have transferred over, and I can't see that until you told me. Sorry. So, yeah, my name is Matthew Kyocho. I'm actually the vice president of Central San Pedro Neighborhood Council. Okay, and you had a question or a comment? Yeah, I just had a question. So as somebody who himself was recently voted in as a vice president, one of the main criticisms of the vice president, right, is that they're literally just the vice president in waiting and you do a lot of kind of thumb twiddling. So I, I would like to ask each candidate, you know, real quickly, because I know you guys are short on time, what would be the one, what would be the largest issue or problem that you personally would like to work on? I mean, whether that's homelessness, veterans, uh, parks, you know, I, I asked more broadly, you know, what, what would be the main issue they would like to work on as vice president? Okay, so I think we start with Cynthia this time. That's a good question. I think our biggest problem is disaster preparedness. We're in a state that has, could have tsunamis. We've had small ones, not large ones. We've had fires. We've had mudslides. Um, we've had flooding here in uh, Westmont. And um, we have earthquakes. So we need to be prepared. We cannot be unprepared and be caught off guard. You only have so much time that you can't have water, you can't have food, you can't have shelter. If, if we aren't prepared, the number of people, just even in Northwest is a lot, but when you consider the whole state and if people can't get to us, if there's an earthquake, then we're gonna have a problem. So I would like to be able to get out and get not just the businesses who have a lot of people that aren't even in our community and would wanna go home if a disaster happened, but the people who have children in schools in different schools and uh, wives that are working, husbands that are working in different places, we need to get everybody ready so they know what to do, how to get a hold of their families and to have enough just basic water and first aid kits and some food for the families so that uh, we can mitigate any great disaster we might have coming toward us. Because if we don't, it'll be too late when it happens. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, Chris, Kaye. Um, thanks. Uh, if I had to pick a single issue right now, I, I, I'd still have to say that um, it's difficult to pick one, honestly, uh, mm. because so many could become crises or are crises right now. But I, I still think that uh, COVID and the related economic downturn and pressure that people are feeling um, are some of the most direct uh, issues that, that people in our neighborhoods and our community are going to be having. Um, I, I think general economic distress and stress uh, uh, and this, these things attached to one another uh, like a web, but um, issues about homelessness, about uh, uh, the shifting workforce, about the uh, housing costs, about uh, energy costs, all of these things have like direct like day-to-day -day impacts on our members of our community. And I think that when possible, um, if it's a matter of uh, making resources available, information available, uh, bringing inf bringing in the information, the feedback, and the input from our uh, stakeholders to agencies and to um, other elected officials um, to help sort of focus and um, highlight the needs uh, in and around Northwest San Pedro uh, have a potential to create some sort of relief to uh, help direct resources towards people. I mean, there's any number of things we could pick, but um, you know, I know that people all over are uh, feeling the pinch and you know, that might be an opportunity to provide a path forward, if not some immediate relief. Okay, with that, I'm gonna to move to taking the vote. And Cynthia, do you wanna call the roll again? I will. And then, so this time you're either gonna say um, Cynthia or you're gonna say Chris, Chris. Or Christian. <laughs> Armando Balderrama. Cynthia. John Barbera. Chris. Victor Christensen. Chris. Maya Danola. 
Chris. John DeMeglio. Cynthia. Uh, Dan Dixon. Mute, unmute, Dan. Oops, he's stuck. He's working. All right. <laughs> oh, I, I don't have a new computer, Cynthia. Uh, okay. Chris. Craig Goldfarb. Cynthia. And Cynthia votes for Cynthia. Christian Guzman cannot vote. Gwen Henry, or I'm sorry, he has to abstain because he's president now. I'm abstaining. Right. <laughs> Gwen Henry. Uh, Christian. Chris. Melanie Labreck. Christian. Kelly Miller. Chris. Angela Sumner. Chris. Chris Valle, yourself. Yeah. I vote for myself. Thank you. Alec Norman. Chris. Andrea Anita Cruz. Chris. Chris. What else? Okay. Oh, okay. okay. You're, uh, you're still live. Pardon? I'm just saying Armando's mic is still hot. He's, we can still hear him. Oh. Okay. So it's 11 for um, Chris Valle. And it was four for Cynthia Gagne. So Mr. Valle wins. Congratulations, Christian. Chris. Thank you guys very much. So the next office is the office of secretary. And the um, secretary acts for the president in the, in the event that both the president and the vice president are absent. Secretary is responsible for, the, for ensuring that all minutes and records are kept, that all notices are posted in accordance with the bylaws. Um, that the secretary monitors the actions of the board to make sure that they're implemented, including all correspondence, picks up the mail or arranges for it to be picked up at least weekly. Um, since we don't currently have a staff member, the secretary will need to be the actual minute taker until such time as a new staff person is found. So with that, I will open it up to um, nominations and I see Christian's hand and you raising your hand to nominate somebody for the role of Secretary Christian? Yes, I'd like to nominate Vic Christensen. Vic, do you accept? Yes, I accept. Okay. Um, any other nominations for Secretary? I am not seeing any, any other hands. So given that there are no, whoops, John DeMiglio. John? I nominate Cynthia. John DeMiglio, I'll nominate Cynthia. Cynthia, do you accept? All right. Yes. I'm taking notes already. Yeah. Okay. So, Vic and Cynthia, anybody else? Uh, no. Okay. So, the, with that, the nominations are closed. And we again have two candidates um, Vic Christensen and Cynthia Gonier. And we'll let each candidate for up to two minutes. And Cynthia, you know, just anything you didn't say before you want to add. Um, no, I, I just, I actually have enjoyed being a secretary. Um, and I really do like getting the letters out. I like even going to the mailbox every day for you, Diana. If when you have something coming in, it doesn't bother me. Um, I like working with the different committees because I don't even have to be on a committee, but talking to them back and forth, it feels like I am on the committee. And uh, again, when I had said that our letters are powerful, that's true. And we need to let our needs be known to the city because if we don't, they are not going to hear us and nothing will happen. Okay. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Vic? Um, my job by profession is a writer. So I'm very familiar mm -hmm. with the writing process, minute taking, report writing. Uh, as some people have found out the hard way, um, I'm a grammar Nazi sometimes with my, uh, <laughs> with my proofreading. Um, and uh, I am very pro email, so, and very persistent when uh, uh, people need to get stuff done and I don't hear from them. So uh, people will be likely to receive emails from me asking what the status is if they don't uh, be proactive and tell me first. 
So this, this job is pretty much uh, right in my ballpark. Thank you. Okay, does anybody want to make a comment or ask a question? Seeing no hands, we'll move to the vote. Um, and again, we'll um, have Cynthia call the roll and just say whether you want to vote for Vic or for Cynthia. This is for secretary. Okay. Armando Balderrama. Is Armando here? Yeah, I'm trying to get I'm clicking. Oh. Cynthia, please. Cynthia, okay. John Barbera. Uh, Victor. Victor Christensen. Mm -hmm. Victor. Maya Danola. Cynthia. John DeMeglio. John DeMeglio. John, there you go. I'm voting for Cynthia. Okay. Dan Dixon. Vic. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Came in muffled. Vic. You voting for Victor? Mm -hmm. uh, Craig Goldfarb. Cynthia. I'm voting for myself. And Kristen Guzman is abstaining. Uh, yes, Gwen I Henry. Am. <laughs> uh, Vic. Okay. Melanie Lebrecht. Vic. Mm. Kelly Miller. Vic. Angela Sumner. Victor. Christian Valle. Victor. Alec Norman. Cynthia. And Andreanita Cruz. Vic. It's six to nine um, in favor of Victor Christensen. Congratulations, Victor. Now the hard work begins. Okay, that leaves the last office, which is the office of treasurer. And the treasurer is responsible for all of the funds that belong to our council. The treasurer receives and disperses the funds, maintains the book of accounts as prescribed by the city and provides monthly financial reports to the board as required. The treasurer has to um, also take a special training that the city um, provides for treasurers. And I think that the job of the treasurer really involves a lot more than, than what we envisioned when we wrote the bylaws, but that's what the bylaws say. So with that, I will open the nominations for treasurer. Um, John Barbera. I nominate Melanie. Um, Melanie, do you accept? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't see any other hands. Any other nominations for treasurer? Seeing no other nominations for treasurer, then I will just take a voice, voice, no, no, a vo voice vote for treasurer. So all in favor of Melanie as treasurer signify by saying aye. 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 All, opposed. all opposed? None. And abstentions? Christian, you're abstentions. Yes, he's an abstention. <laughs> Christian, say you're an abstention. <laughs> I will abstain. They're not always <laughs> called for, but I will abstain. Okay. So, um, Melanie, congratulations. You continue to have the job of treasurer. Hey. Such a well deserved. Boss, however many years. Well deserved. <laughs> so, with that, um, we have our, our new um, officers for the year. Congratulations to all of you. And Christian, the meeting is all yours. Okay, thank you, Diana. It's been a pleasure to work with you. And let us move on to the next agenda item. If it's the pleasure of the board, we will move on to public comment on non-agenda items. So, Madam, so Mr. Secretary or Mr. Vice President, do you see anyone from the public that would like to make comment on non-agenda items? I believe I see Craig's hand raised. Uh, I'm looking in participants. I 
We've got two attendees as well. Oh yeah, we have two attendees. We have. Um, Excuse me, as a point of order, I believe you need to remove move Ray and I to attendees. Okay, we can do that. Okay. Uh, uh, you also need to remove rock. Oh, yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, thank you. Just trying to follow protocol. Panels. Um, so I see Craig's yeah. hand raised and I see uh, Matthew Kiyoko and Tim McOsker in uh, attendees who'd also like to make comments. Christian. Oh, uh, Christian. now I see Melody Gwen as well. Christian, before you head into public comment, there's one last matter that needs to be taken care of. If we can to do a treasure, we need to appoint bank card holder as well as second signer. Okay, that was not on the agenda, but if it's the pleasure of the board, if there's no objection, we can do those two items as suggested by Madam Treasurer. Is there any objection to taking up those appointed positions. Okay, hearing no objection then, let's move on to that. Okay. So second for signer Steiner, is your I suggestion first, Madam Treasurer? I would like to nominate John Barbara. Okay, there's a nomination for John Barbera to be the second signer. Do you accept Mr. Barbera? Yes, I do, Chairman. All right. Are there any other nominations for the second signer position? I'm sorry, who was that? Do you have your hand up, Gwen? Uh, no, this is still for the prior. Okay. Oh, public comment. Public comment. Um, Christian has his hand up. Uh, Craig has his hand raised. I think okay. Comment as well. Well, we're taking nominations right now. We moved on to the second signer. Craig, do you have a nomination you'd like to make? No, my hand was raised up for public comment, not for. Okay. okay. Uh, so, uh, as long as I'm speaking, I still uh, Rock and Lori and uh, are st still showing up and Ray. Okay, I appreciate that, Mr. Goldfarb. We will get that handled. In the meantime, if there are no other Mr. nominations Pony. for second Pony. signer, we can Pony. take Pony. that Pony. up by yeah. acclamation. Pony. Yes, Pony. Mr. Pony. Vice Pony. President. Um, is this for, or are we combining the roles of second signer and cardholder? They're not necessarily- No, it's separate. It's separate. Okay. They all have to have separate vote counts that I have to turn okay. in. Let's come to order now. So. One last time, are there any other nominations for second signer? If there are no other nominations, we will take a roll call vote. Take a roll call vote by acclamation and appoint Mr. Barbera. Okay. okay. Um, okay. So, go ahead, Madam All Treasurer, there? you may take the roll. Do you want me to do it? I can or you can. Okay, I, I can do it. Um, you can just cover me. I'll just mark them. Right. Armando Balderrama? No. No? No. Okay. John Barbera? Mm -hmm. You're muted, John. Mm -hmm. I assume yes. it's a yes. Yes. Victor G Christensen? Yes. Maya Danola? Yes. John DeMeglio? No. Dan Dixon? Yes. Craig Goldfarb? Abstain. Cynthia Gagne, yes. Christian Guzman, can he vote for these people now? Yeah, he can vote. Yeah, I can vote now. Yes, okay. I vote for Mr. Barbera. Gwen Henry? Yes. Melanie, yes. Kelly Miller? Yes. Angela, Angela Sumner. Sub Oops. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> sorry, go. Angela Sumner. Yes. Christian Valle. Uh, yes. Alec Norman. Yes. Andrea Anita Cruz. Yes. 
Okay. The, um, credit card holder. What I'd like to do is because it's already issued and it's good until 2024 is just huh. keep it in my name. It's easier for the treasurer just to have the credit card and be responsible for it. One thing I'd with the board's approval, what I'd like to add this year, though, is one thing that they've added on is we can have a second credit card holder in case something happens to me. The second credit card holder can invoke using that credit card so the board isn't hampered if I'm out of commission. So the title is second credit card, credit holder? card holder. So we have to vote on credit card holder and then alternate credit card holder if the board so wishes to do an alternate credit card holder. Okay, thank you, Madam Treasurer. If there's no objection, then shall we keep Madam Treasurer Melanie Lebrec as the card holder? And then if there's no objection, we will move on to this alternate credit card holder then. No objection here. We're good. Okay. Okay, then, Madam Treasurer. What is your, what's the protocol then for the alternate credit card holder? Uh, nominations for it. I'd like to nominate Vic Christensen for the alternate credit card holder because of his availability and he has financial background. Okay, there's a nomination by Madam Treasurer for Vic Christensen to be the second card holder. Mr. Christensen, do you accept? Yes, Okay. Are there any other nominations? Okay. Well, hearing none, why don't we do a voice vote just to be on the safe side for this one? So all those in favor of Vic Christensen say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Would anyone like to declare that they're, they're abstaining? All right. Well, congratulations, Mr. Secretary. You're also the alternate card holder now. So if it's the pleasure of the board now, we will move back to the public comment section. So let me see. Let us see fellow executive members, if there are any from the public first, and if there are, we will take their comment and we can move back to the board members for their comment. So right now I see Matthew Kiocho and Mr. Tim McCosker. So we will take Matthew Kiocho. please give us your comment. Hi, I just wanted to congratulate uh, the new executive board. Uh, sounds like you guys have a great group. And I just want to say I, I look forward for Central San Pedro and Northwest San Pedro to work together. I, I think we can do a lot of great things together. We're, we're all part of one town. So just want to say uh, congratulations. And I uh, look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Excellent. Mr. McCosker, would you like to make your comment? Yes, thank you, President Christian Guzman. I appreciate the opportunity. It's nice to hear Matthew um, uh, uh, congratulate everyone. I too congratulate everyone. It's nice to hear him uh, look forward to um, uh, cooperation between the neighborhood councils, which I'm sure will occur. Um, I wanted to um, to also just uh, on behalf of myself and, and my wife, Connie, who's on another meeting <laughs> in another room, uh, just uh, uh, congratulate um, Ray and Lori for their service and thank them for their service. Connie had the opportunity to serve on this neighborhood council. This is our council, by the way. Uh, Connie had an opportunity to serve on this council and just as I do, has just profound respect for the work you do and uh, particularly for Ray and Lori and the way that they've served. And I really look forward to following you um, and uh, uh, being at future meetings. And uh, Christian, congratulations, my friend. Uh, I know you'll do a great job. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, OK, checking through. Well, yeah, yes. no, you know what? I don't know. It, you know, this is, I, I didn't throw in the joke of there's Christian, Christian, and Christian Sen. 
<laughs> we will rule favorably toward all religions, by the way. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so anyone else from the public? I'm checking. I don't see any other hands from the public, so we'll go back now to the panelist side, the board members, and I know that Councilman Goldfarb had his hand up earlier. Count Councilman Goldfarb, would you like to make public comment? Sorry, I, I put, put my hand down. Um, let's go forward and have a good year. I still see Gwen. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I see Gwen. Gwen, would you like I, to make your comment? Yes, I, I would like to take the time. There doesn't seem to be another opportunity um, to say thank you to everyone who is now leaving the board. Rock, uh, Braun has been an exemplar, ex, exemplary uh, uh, board member. Um, Lori, of course, has had many duties and and Ray, without question, has been a role model uh, for calmness and, and consistency and thoroughness. Um, as an opportunity, I would, I would hope that all of the new, member, new members with their talents, remember that whatever your expertise and talents are and your passions, there are plenty of opportunities to utilize them to, to great effect. Um, take, take an opportunity to look at all of the committees. Uh, we also do lack a port committee and it would be very great for us to um, reform that as well. And uh, welcome to all of, all of you. I'm looking forward to working with everyone. Thank you. Okay, excellent. We'll do one more check on that for public comment. And then if there are no others, we will move on to the next item. I see Melanie. Okay, Madam Treasurer. Yeah, I just, I also wanna thank the outgoing members of the board um, and Lori and Ray. They, they've been a, an example of what um, leadership is. Ray has always been the calming voice to a lot of in situations that we've had periodically over meetings. And I think we all need to take that in consideration with how we, um, whoops, how we deal with people. It, we have to learn to engage and how to partner and not be antagonistic. We, we need to all work together as a team because we are a team and we all are the faces of Northwest San Pedro Neighborhood Council. And I look forward to working with everybody. I think we'll have a great year. Okay. Let us move now to the next section, which is public officials and their reports. And if there are any elected and government representatives, please speak up now. I think I saw Mr. Bezmalinovich. Are you here, Augie? Okay, well, go ahead. I, we couldn't quite hear you, but please make your comment. Give us your report. He's calling from his phone, so I might have a little difficulty. Okay, let's give him a second. And then if not, we'll move on and we can try to come back to Augie. Mr. Chair, Lee Williams has his hand up too. All right, good evening. Oh, can you not hear me? <clears throat> okay. Oh, we I'm can talking. hear you. It's a little garbled, but Is go ahead, please. No, we can hear you. All right, next Board of Harbor Commission meetings, July 15, 9 a.m. and uh, August 5th and 19th, also at 9 a.m., Harbor Commission meetings are being held via video conference. Talk slowly, um, we're, we're trying to uh, make Harbor Commission meeting uh, in October. So we'll, I'll keep you in. Uh, waterfront update. A lot of progress has been made with the Promenade and Town Square project. And uh, <clears throat> I just found out today that uh, a pallet of 
uh, pavers has been delayed, which will delay the project, push back the project about six weeks. So instead of end of July, we're looking somewhere in September, having made progress by having a signed term sheet and agreement on environmental reimbursement. Uh, the project is expected to cost 20 to 25 million on three to four acres of land. Uh, the term sheet is close with the new Cabrillo Way Marina, and they need to go through an environmental process also. And we're hopeful, hopeful that interest will come back on the outer cruise ship terminal along with Warehouse One. San Pedro Fish Market is looking at moving and creating a new facility along the cruise ship promenade, which is located under the Vincent Thomas Bridge. They'll be working on parking and traffic issues. Uh, the EIR has started for this project. Trainee's Portside Restaurant at the Old Canetti's building is moving forward. They're getting their permits approved and will start construction soon. They're hoping to open within a year and will serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. A video was released with Commissioner Anthony Perosi, uh, which came out a couple of weeks ago. It's pretty informative. Fleet Week 2021, uh, the free annual event celebrating the men and women of the U.S. Uh, sea Service CIS is returning to the Port of Los Angeles over Labor Day weekend. Um, we're expecting uh, tours of ships to be conducted Friday through Monday, September 3rd through September 6th. And finally, the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium opened to the public on Saturday, June 19th. The aquarium new hours are from noon to five, Wednesday through Sunday. And that concludes my report, unless you have any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bezmalinovich. I'm going to take this time to also invite all of you elected officials to submit written, be written reports beforehand because it's very helpful to the board to formulate questions if there might be any. And also, it's really helpful for the minute taker or the note taker. So if you'd like to submit a report beforehand for the next meeting and the future meetings, thank you very much in advance. If there's no Christian, objection, Christian, to, do you have my email address, Christian? And uh, if so, I'd like to have your email address. Please, please email me uh, later on tonight so I can have it. I appreciate it. Thank you. I will do that. Thank you, Augie. Okay, let's move on now to Octaviano Rios from the Los Angeles Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. And it's just a reminder, we still, we do still have uh, Lee Williams at the hand of this. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. All right. So, okay, Octaviano, we can see you now. We see all you. right. Fantastic. You know, it dumped all of my backgrounds. It didn't <laughs> let me activate. So while everybody was uh, moving on, I fixed it. So congratulations again, everybody, uh, and all the new officers. Uh, thank you for your commitment to those new roles. Uh, so my name, again, my name is Octaviano Rios. I'm with the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. Um, I did uh, slap myself on the hand because I didn't uh, thoroughly and appropriately uh, thank the outgoing board members for all of their service, all of the years. I know Ray and Lori have been on the board for so many years. Uh, we're not expecting them to leave anytime soon from the community. So we look forward to seeing you all uh, continue your activism in the community. Of course, you have your commissioner, Regalado, who's gonna be on the board for a few years on the commission, but uh, you know, specifically Rock, uh, Ashfield, Jan Kane, uh, Raymond uh, Regalado, Mary Chan, Lori, and then Bron D'Angelo, thank you so much for your service on the board. And uh, you know, feel free to continue uh, reaching out to the department. We also work with stakeholders, not uh, just exclusively with board members. So thank you all for, for a generous time and all the, the great times that uh, we had communicating uh, some of the issues uh, with uh, the department and other city agencies. So thank you all. So um, I'm gonna uh, try to be as brief as possible. No promises with my, uh, with my updates and announcements. Um, your elections are over, but people have uh, feedback to provide. So with the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment and uh, in partnership with the city clerk's elections division, uh, there will be some convenings, some meetings to uh, listen to some of this, some of these list of concerns, uh, list of accolades, uh, and recommendations and suggestions for the future 
elections of the neighborhood councils. So the next one's going to be in uh, 2023. So uh, let's be better prepared to uh, face those challenges, uh, hopefully without the virus, another virus. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the onboarding of elected and continuing, bo continuing board members, uh, I previously announced that there will be that there would have been a uh, orientation uh, style uh, workshop presentation uh, July 22nd. Uh, it's now July 28th. Uh, your NC profiles, uh, which you should have received uh, July 2nd, uh, some of you may not have received it because we didn't have your uh, emails registered just yet. I will forward you. The uh, to those new to the board, uh, your NC profiles. There will be a link, a lot of hyperlinks, to uh, uh, to different uh, web pages. In this particular instance, your RSVP link to these uh, Core Institute modules, uh, series of trainings and workshops to um, to improve your skills and leadership on the board. In this particular series, you'll learn about the history, mission, and purpose of of the neighborhood council system. Uh, how it's governed within uh, regulatory and, and, and legal frameworks uh, about the early notification system and, and, and posting your agendas, et cetera. So it's a long list of introductions to the neighborhood council system and running your boards. Uh, so that's July 28th at 6.30 PM. Put a hold on your, uh, on your calendar for that. It might be the last one, but it will be recorded. So if you don't get a chance to attend that, uh, we'll share the uh, pre-recorded uh, session with you all. What's the time again? Uh, it's 6, uh, 6.30, July 28th, 6.30. So that's coming up pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, in the spirit of trainings, uh, funding, as you know, uh, all board members are required to take, uh, to uh, complete three trainings, ethics, funding, and the code of conduct. The city clerk's office has regular trainings, not just for financial officers, uh, but for the whole board and stakeholders are welcome. Uh, their financial officer trainings uh, are required if you're an officer, of course, signer, uh, bank holder, and treasurer. Uh, the next one is uh, tomorrow at from 2 to 4, uh, and the next one after that is July 27th uh, from 6 to 8 uh, p.m. Again, the links are on your NC profiles. Uh, your administrative packet, uh, if you haven't uh, uh, completed, I believe you, you did approve it tonight or uh, the previous meeting. Uh, if you have any questions, there is a workshop that's being held. The last one for the year is uh, July 22nd uh, at 6 p.m. to 7.30, and that's hosted by the city clerk's uh, uh, NC uh, funding division and their staff. The council file. So this one I really want to highlight in neon signs. Uh, the city council uh, uh, is working to improve uh, the neighborhood council system. And there is a council file you might want to look over, uh, council file 21-0407, titled Neighborhood Council Standardized Election Rules, Stakeholder Participation. The spirit of it is to try to improve uh, the participation, increase the participation of stakeholders in the system by standardizing the election structure among all 99 neighborhood councils. They're all very unique. So uh, the city council is trying to pursue uh, standardizing that, as well as looking for cost savings in the administration of the elections, which the city clerk's office elections division does currently. Again, that's council file uh, council file 21-0407. Take a look at it. There are some neighborhood councils that already filed a uh, community impact statement on those. Now, virtual meetings. Uh, this is a big news. Uh, if you haven't heard already that uh, all of our neighborhood councils are required to hold their meeting, all neighborhood council meetings, the regular board meetings, special meetings, and committee meetings virtually until December 31st of this year. So that's an extension uh, from what uh, we've heard previously that there was going to be some lifting of restrictions because of uh, the lifting uh, in the state uh, governments, not so locally. Uh, so City Hall is still in a level of restrictions as well as staff in terms of going face to face. Uh, um, into the public uh, uh, and, and go into neighborhoods. So uh, keep that in mind. So uh, until further notice, uh, you are stuck with virtual meetings, uh, good or bad, right? Uh, so lots of convenience there. So congratulations on those who enjoy it. If you have any comments, uh, uh, you can email your comments at uh, commission at empowerla.org. It not only goes to the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners, but it also goes to the leadership staff to compile some of the feedback, uh, both in support uh, or in uh, opposition of that. 
bylaw amendments. Uh, by now, many folks uh, probably experience uh, some of the challenges or celebrations of your bylaws, some of the uncertainties or, or uh, needs for clarification. We are now accepting applications from all 99 neighborhood councils if you're ready to go uh, for your proposed uh, bylaw changes. You'll submit them, the department will review them. If required, the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners will review those that relate to structure changes. And the last uh, date to submit them is April 15th of 2022. So you have plenty of time to uh, review your bylaws, uh, make a list of proposed changes, fill out the application, and if you need any direction, any advice, reach out to me, reach out to the department, um, your fellow board members that have been on the board before that have, may have some strong opinions about what they like or don't like. So the deadline again, April 15th, 2022. And uh, last but not least, please, please, please read your NC profiles. Most of the material that I just gave you, most of the updates and announcements are in your NC profiles. Many folks don't take the time to read it. That's why I take the time to kind of simplify it and uh, in layman's terms and share it with you all as well as the stakeholders for transparency's sake uh, so you can hear it. So people learn different ways. They see it, they hear it, uh, they and, and repeat it many times until people uh, kick us out of their meetings. But uh, at the end of the day, the goal is for folks to understand what's going on so they can make better decisions and take, the op take advantage of the opportunities that are presented to them. Again, my name is Octaviano Rios, Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. My contact information is in my awesome little background that's branded for the department. Jot down the number, email me with your questions, concerns, reach out to me, don't be shy. Thank you so much. Thank you for my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Rios. Always a wealth of information. So. I did hear from Mr. Vice President that Lee Williams had his hand up. I'm not sure if he is an elected official of some sort, but if there's no objection, I think we can sort of take another public comment from him. He was waiting for comment on agenda items and we never got to. Okay, let's, let's let him do that then. Hi everyone, thank you. I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank those who uh, served last year, Rock, Ron, Mary, Ray, Lori. I know it's a hard job. Your commitment to the community is um, well respected and well appreciated. And uh, congratulations to those that are moving forward for Northwest. I live in Northwest and uh, looking forward to the good things that you're going to continue um, in years to come. So thank you again. Thank you, Lee. Uh, I previously I saw uh, Maya's hand raised. Did you have uh, a question for Augie, or was it just a point of clarification on the trainings? Is there like a, a required deadline by which we must complete these trainings? Uh, for the I can take part of that. Um, for the uh, ethics training and the. Uh, 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 Line and um, con code of conduct. The code, code of conduct and the financial training. Um, and so, in order to be able to vote on uh, an item that uh, uh, relates to our spending money, you'd have to have the financial training. Um, basically, to, to be a board member in, in good standing and to be able to vote at all, you'd have to have the ethics and the code of conduct. Um, so, it's more or less pending. In, in order to proceed with those things, you'd have to have it done ASAP. And the financial officer <laughs> thing is two hours for the treasurer thing, but the one that the rest of the board has to do is like 20 minutes. It's like a 20 minute video for the financial. Great, thank you everyone. I appreciate the clarification. Okay, well, thank you. Let's return to the agenda then. Are there any public officials or elected official representatives? I don't believe I saw any more. I saw one uh, last year. I see Officer Brown in uh, uh, attendees. Yes, we will go to the first responders, oh, first responders report under yeah, item nine. All right, Madam Treasurer, are you still a budget representative? Would you like to give a report and then a budget advocate report after that? Yeah, there's no report for budget rep and we, we don't have a budget. Usually we'll give the budget advocate report, but we don't have that. And I don't know if we have a budget advocate report or not. So we'll see, oh, Danielle's got her hand up, so. Okay, let 
let us have Matt, Miss Danielle Sandoval make a quick report then. Danielle, you're live. Yes. You guys can hear me, right? Yes, we can. We can hear okay, you. Okay, good. Okay. So first of all, I just want to say congratulations to the new board and the outgoing board. Um, I know some of the members have been on there for so long and they're, you know, go to them. They're like the mentors of neighborhood councils. And although they're not on the board, I know that uh, they'll still be active. So um, thank you for all of your service. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Danielle Sandoval. I've been a budget advocate for the past six years. And um, at one time, Melanie also served as a budget advocate. And um, currently, your budget representatives are still, is still Melanie and Lori Jacobs until the new board selects or votes in new budget representatives, they will stay in those roles. Um, our budget advocate report, we are doing them in writing. However, <laughs> we selected a new executive board as well. So until the outreach chair gets um, into position and gets ready to do whatever they're gonna do and whatever the new executive board decides, um, I'm hoping that we'll still be able to have that written report available to you. They are all online at um, www.budgetadvocates.com. So you can also re review the reports and see who your uh, budget advocates are. Currently it's myself, uh, Gina Martinez from a uh, Wilmington Neighborhood Council and also newly elected is Cheryl Ackerbloom from Coastal San Pedro Neighborhood Council, your former uh, minute taker. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, the city's budget on um, June 2nd, Mayor Eric Garcetti approved an $11.2 billion budget, including a $7.5 billion of general fund monies for the fiscal year that began on July 1st. According to Mayor Garcetti's press release, the budget includes a spending plan that uh, dedicates nearly a billion dollars to confronting the homelessness crisis, 300 million for um, racial and economic justice across the city and commits uh, critical resources to helping Angelinos recover from COVID-19. In the current fiscal year that ended on June 30th, the city's budget and finances benefited from 640 million uh, infused from cash from Washington under the American Rescue Plan. It allowed the city to eliminate uh, this year's uh, deficit, replenish the budget stabilization fund, 118 million, and create a reserve fund of almost 700 million, representing about 9.5% of the general fund revenues, close to its goal of 10%. In the upcoming fiscal year, the second installment of 640 million of cash from the federal government will allow the city's balance to, but uh, will allow the city to balance its budget, restore services, address homelessness, and fund ongoing operations. However, the city is using one-time money to finance ongoing operations to tune uh, to the tune of 134 million a clear violation of the city's financial policies. As a result, the city is projecting a budget deficit for the following year of 261 million, a number that will most likely increase uh, based on the comments by the uh, city's administrative officer. Um, again, this is all in writing and there is more amounts and just for um, sake of time, I will go ahead and email that to the board and so you can go ahead and review that. Um, I would like to also mention that we are gonna have budget day um, this year on August 21st. They're hoping that we can have a uh, hybrid model, which would be in person, Zoom, and live streaming the event. We're still discussing it. So um, as I receive more updates on how we're gonna handle budget day, I will gladly come back to the neighborhood council and give you a, an update on that. As I mentioned, we do have a new board. So our new uh, co-chairs is Jennifer Goody and Glenn Bailey. Um, we do have a new vice chair, which is uh, Barbara Ringette. 
and um, some of our other officers are the same. They haven't changed. So um, with that, is there any questions? Thank you, Danielle, for an excellent report. Let us move on now to the next agenda item, which will be the first responders reports. And I believe we had a couple of officers. Hi, good evening, I'm Officer Dan Brown from the LAPD Harbor Division. Uh, quick crime updates for everyone. Um, I know there's a lot of new board members, so um, you guys have been hearing me speak about the rising crime trend that we've been having the, the first half of this year. Um, definitely troubling in a lot of areas. This is actually kind of a, a good um, month to give a crime update because we the stats I have go through June 30th, so just about halfway exactly through the year. And the most troubling spots that we have still plaguing um, this area is um, in violent crime. Uh, specifically aggravated assaults. That's pretty much single-handedly driving the, um, sorry, it looks like, am I supposed to click panelist? Okay. Can you guys still hear me? Sorry. Yes. We can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah. And we just lost. Now it. we cannot. <laughs> yeah, he'll rejoin momentarily to become a panelist. In case he wants to show up, he's muted. Okay. Crime. I just it popped me off, and now I'm back in. So you're back. There you go. Now I can see me in the picture there. Um, but yeah, I was talking about the aggravated assault numbers are the number one driver of our uh, violent crime increase right now, and that includes any kind of assault with a weapon, or it could be even a uh, a battery that causes a severe injury to the person, um, where it becomes like a what we call a felony battery, and we have had 68. Um, in just my area of San Pedro, which um, just to let everybody know who isn't already familiar, the, the basic car area that I cover, um, it includes a pretty significant portion of central San Pedro as well. And it goes all the way to Pacific, the south down to 10th Street. So I know that technically the Northwest San Pedro Neighborhood Council District, um, I think it only goes as far east as maybe Myler or so, if I'm not mistaken. But a lot of my aggravated assaults do include kind of that Gaffey corridor and um, just west of Pacific, like Grand Avenue uh, and that sort of thing. So a lot of the um, aggravated assaults aren't necessarily Northwest San Pedro area, but that being said, there's still a significant increase. So for example, um, June of 2021 for my entire area, I had 17 aggravated assaults, but just in the Northwest San Pedro area, there were seven. So still definitely concerning and especially when you compare it to last year's number of three for the Northwest San Pedro neighborhood council area, it's, it's a huge increase. So that's definitely um, the, the big concern on the violent crime front. As far as property crimes go, we've had kind of a weird year because um, petty theft, like shoplifting and unattended property theft, bikes being left unlocked and disappearing, um, those numbers are weighed down, um, down by 31% year to date. Um, even um, cars getting broken into is down about 15% overall. We've had 100 uh, compared to 120 last year. But the things that are sticking really hard this year are grand theft autos, so cars actually physically being stolen, and burglaries, which, you know, it's like when a home gets broken into or it could even be a closed business. Those numbers are both up. Um, so our total property crime numbers are, so they show down 9% because petty threat theft is like the biggest um, number of crimes, but still very concerning that 16% that more stolen cars um, are, are happening on the streets. But as far as just June goes uh, this year, um, as I already mentioned, aggravated assaults are up over 140%. Uh, burglaries were down 20% compared to June of last year. And theft from vehicles was down 31%. We ended the month with exactly 66 part one crimes, which is the exact same number that we had last year. So um, kind, of a, kind of a wash as far as that goes. Um, one notable incident was a domestic violence related kidnapping by gunpoint, uh, boyfriend and girlfriend that have had numerous um, domestic violence incidents in the past. 
Um, on this particular occasion in late June, the, the man pulled a gun and forced the girl to go with him. When she didn't want to, he fired around into the ground. So it counted as a, as a shooting incident, but she wasn't hit by gunfire. But he was, he was arrested, thankfully. We're still waiting to see what the prosecution will bring because unfortunately, uh, we don't know her level of cooperation because she has still been communicating with him, it seems, since the incident. So that, that definitely um, is kind of like troubling. Sorry, my light went off. But um, as far as that goes, it's basically the same things that I talked to you guys about each month. Um, that Gaffey corridor between First Street and 10th Street um, and just east and west of there is the primary spot where we have the most crime. But looking at the map, I can kind of try to show you guys. I wish I could pull it up on my screen, but I just have my phone. But we have quite a bit that's um, towards the western border, um, towards the west of San Pedro as well. So um, it's kind of all over. But I'll, I'll, I'll finish my report with that and just open it up to any questions that anybody has. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Brown. Just as a reminder to the council, typically we'll take questions to me and then you can ask them. But I did see one member of the public, so we'll take that one first. Diana Nave, do you have a quick question for Officer Brown? Yeah, I do. My, my question has to do with um, graffiti and because I have been sending quite a, several times recently, the same general location, I've sent graffiti um, notices into the 311 app. And I'm wondering if, if copies of that are sent to the police department or if we should also be sending them to you, particularly since it keeps reoccurring in the same area. And it, it indicates both um, PWL and RSV <clears throat> on it. Yeah, no, I don't get those. If you send them directly in to um, 311, it just goes to our graffiti abatement team that the city of Los Angeles has. And they usually are pretty good about responding. You know, within a couple of days or so, they'll paint over it. Um, but no report gets automatically sent to me. What I would say is if it's on your property or anybody else's private property, um, you can report it to me as a crime, as a vandalism, and I'll take a report if you wish. Um, if it's on somebody else's private property, they can contact me and request a report if they want to take um, a vandalism report to get it documented to the police. Um, but if it occurs on public property, generally reports aren't taken. Like if it's city property, a, a wall or park or something, it's, um, it's just painted over. That's just part of the budget that the city has for graffiti abatement and they just paint over it. It's usually the fastest way to just um, take care of it. Thank you, officer. Council member Dixon. Thank you, Officer Brown. I wonder if you know anything about the incident at Harbor Highlands gated community yesterday afternoon. Uh, no. a, an, indiv an individual <laughs> armed, I guess you'd say, with a long metal pipe that vaguely resembled a weapon, a gun of some sort. Um, wandered around and had contact with some of the people there. Uh, he was he was detained, I believe, at 7-Eleven and talked to, but uh, no arrest occurred. And I suspect I know the reason why, but you did I see you shake your head? You had not heard about it? Yeah, I, I hadn't heard about it. I was off yesterday and nobody brought that to my attention today. So I'm, I'm not aware of it. I could probably figure it out if you wanted to, um, you know, reach me on the side. I can certainly look up a little bit more detail. That would be good. I've, I've had some questions from residents there. As you can imagine, it may be a very minor incident from a law enforcement standpoint, but, and given the current state of affairs, but if you're a resident there and something will, occurs like that, it can be alarming. So I will uh, try to get more details and then talk to you. Yeah, and if I could just plug real quick, if um, you know um, any of you belong to a neighborhood where there's an active neighborhood watch, that is a great way for you to get more information about these details because I'll usually meet or have um, periodic meetings or um, just speak with the, the various neighborhood watch leads. And, and I get a lot of those types of questions where you're right. I'll be honest. It's not going to be a very big deal. Nobody's going to bring that to my attention. If there's some crazy guy waving a stick around, I'm not going to know about all those because I'll be honest, it happens quite a bit. But when those, like you said, it's a big deal to the people that live there though. And sharing that information among the other residents and then reaching out to the local senior lead officer for whatever area you're in, um, you can usually get 
a little bit more of the details on what the exact circumstances were, because there's rumors that spread, and then maybe a little bit more details about what the disposition of the incident was. So I just want to throw that out there. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Council member Maya Dinola. Thank you so much. Evening officer, sorry, I'm uh, exhausted mm. on the East Coast right now. Uh, I wanted to just ask you, so I'm just so you know a little bit, I'm a social worker by training and have worked forensics for a long time. Um, and I am wondering if there is any movement at Harbor uh, as I listen to you talk, to bring in some uh, new trainings for your officers so that y'all are better equipped to deal with some of these situations that you continue to encounter in San Pedro. Um, and I'm specifically referring to some of the newer, uh, more innovative and accurate um, forms of um, dealing with people in distress and crisis that we are seeing in some other cities around the country. Wondering if there's a movement for that um, at Harbor and if not, or if there is, if there's any way that we can support you in having that happen. Obviously, I think we all know it would make your officers and us as the community a lot safer. So just curious for your thoughts on that. Yeah, are you, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about mental health crisis or what, what specifically? Correct. Well, mental health and uh, domestic violence as you referred to the mm. recent incident. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, a complicated sure. issue, as I don't need to yeah, tell you, yeah. I'm sure. Right. Yeah, I was just trying to get a, an idea of where you're going because, um, as far as the mental health front goes, I am not aware of any new training. I will just say that for the last ten years or probably more, the LAPD has done quite a bit of mental health training and uh, focus on de-escalating and trying to um, just lower the intensity of of encounters with people that are suffering from mental illness or, or even drug, you know, intoxication, people that are under the influence of narcotics. And so that's always been a part of the LAPD's um, approach for at least the last 10 years or more. I mean, I, I, there's been training for as long as I've been on the job for more than 14 years, but I would say that they have been increasing it over the, for the last 10 years or so. Um, in the last two years, I can't say that there's been anything new that I, can really focus on that I, that's coming to my mind, um, but they are always working on new things. But as far as like a lot significantly different or more training, I can't say that I, I know anything about that. But what I will say on that note is that going back to last year, there was the, the defund the police movement, if you will, if I could say that term from last year that was in the summertime, um, that led to the city pursuing an approach where law enforcement officers might not necessarily even respond to some of the situations like what you're talking about. And as far as I know, a pilot program was created and it, it was staffed, but to my knowledge, it has never been used in probably in the city as far as I know, but I, I can't really for sure say on that, but I definitely have not seen them in Harbor Division. But I'm, I, as I understand, it's the goal of the city to implement that perhaps at some point. So, but as far as for the officers specifically, a newer type of training of this, that kind of thing, no, I haven't really exactly heard of that. And I hope I answered your question without going too long there. Yeah. Well, thank no, you, I'm Maya, just... for bringing that excellent topic up. And I think that this might be worth revisiting in detail at a future meeting or at a committee meeting. If that, if, if Mr. Brown would be willing, he could come to one of our committees and then we could speak at length on this topic Absolutely. but for now i know that we do have a few more other council people's hands up so i want to make sure that we give other people the time so i have mr councilman goldfarb and then we'll take madam treasurer after that um can i just quickly uh, as a complete newbie just uh, i guess a point of order i don't know what do i do if and i'm sorry it's 11 o'clock at night on the east coast i have to go um at this point is there something that i need to do to excuse myself uh, from well, you've, you've notified today. us. Thank you, Councilwoman Maya, and we appreciate your service. We look forward to working with you in the future, and I think it's understandable. It's summertime, so we're, some of us are going to be on vacation occasionally. So very good. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, we'll note it, and we will see you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Maya. Bye, Maya.
Okay, Officer Brown, how are you today? Um, um, so my my issue is um, that a few months back there was a death up on Westmont by the warehouses near the Field of Dreams, and it's come to my attention that there's been a lot of drag racing up there. A couple of weeks ago, there was um, complaints from one of the neighbor from some of the pe neighbors that there were people making loud, there was loud car noises, which sounds like an offshoot. So are you guys aware of that? And are you, I, I go up there quite often to run because it's, there's not a lot up there and it's, it's an easy, it's easy for me to do the sidewalks. Um, I also, every weekend when I do go up there, I find a lot of empty bottle, beer bottles and stuff like that. So I know there's activity there. Um, what, have you, what are you doing? Yeah, so you were talking about, yeah, on Westmont, east of Gaffey, right? There's the, yes. that, the traffic issue. Yeah, I have actually received some complaints from the businesses that were over there. And um, in response to those complaints, I have, I have um, done some patrols over there, but I'll be honest, I haven't ever come across any kind of drag race that's over there. Usually when we get these kind of traffic related complaints, which are many, um, I'll try to do what I can. A lot of times that's happening late at night, as I understand. Generally, I don't personally work late at night very often, although I will usually do it just periodically just to try to address issues like this. But because it's so infrequent, um, if it's not a daily occurring thing, it's sometimes unlikely that I'm able to come across it. So um, in this particular case, and I think the first time I heard about this complaint was well over a year ago, um, we sent out a message to our South traffic team and they do have officers that do work all hours of the night. Um, I don't know personally if they have gotten any tickets over there for speeding or anything. I could try to follow up and, and see for you on that. But um, from my own personal experience, I haven't witnessed it myself, although I've seen the, the tire marks in the road. So it's certainly something that I know um, is happening or at least periodically. I think the incident that you're talking about where um, a person died in a motor vehicle accident was more related to intoxication than drag racing. I didn't hear any um, allegation that there was more than one car involved. And I believe alcohol was, uh, and speed, obviously the guy was speeding himself, but um, I think alcohol was the bigger player on that one than a, like a more formal drag race, if you will. I think with that particular area, because it's so quiet at night when there's nobody you know, at the businesses and there's no street lights, I wouldn't say that it's likely um, a formal drag racing, but it's where people who want to do that kind of thing on their own know that it's going to be a quiet place and, and um, you know, away from the public eye. So, but no, I haven't personally seen anything just to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you, officer. Just as a reminder to the council, we do have an excellent presentation by Michael Cham from the Port of Los Angeles up next. So let's take a couple more questions and then maybe we will decide to move on to that. And typically we stop at nine o'clock and we do have other items. So, our, oh, I recognize Madam Treasurer and then we'll take Armando after that. Yeah, um, to follow up on Dan, what Dan Dixon had said to you, um, Dan, they, um, what happened was the gentleman, as we'll call him, proceeded to Big Nick's is where he started. And he vandalized a couple of cars and vandalized. I was in messages with John Bagakis and the perp vandalized one of his employees' cars and she was going to get out of her car and he broke all of her windows and attacked her in his car, her car. And she was scared. I guess there was something filed on that. Other cars were damaged in the parking lot. So calls went in on that. And then he proceeded to head to the gated community and jump the fence. He went through the gated mm -hmm. community and caused a ruckus. And one of the females in the gated community saw him on her ring. So she went outside because her child was home and he was by her place. And he had a pipe that was configured to look like a gun. He had like a handle on it and it looked like a gun. And she asked him what he was doing and he held it up to her head like it was a gun and mumbled something like boom, boom. 
okay? Mm. So then she like yelled at him and he went, yep, that's him. And he went running. She went into the house because her 10 year old was in the house with the dog and went running in her house, called the cops. So they had gotten like several calls on the same person. So as soon as he knew he had done something wrong, he jumped the fence again and went out and he was out in front of the gated community. And they had him in handcuffs sitting on the side of the sidewalk. Videos on? Yeah. Chris Ward drove up and they said they had him. He got it on his dash cam and they said that they had him on trespassing and vandalism. So at that point, when that happened, they thought he was arrested. Next thing you know, Mike Mikhail went out in his car and they see him releasing him and he heads to 7-Eleven, <laughs> picking up rocks and throwing them at 7-Eleven. So what happened, for, why he wasn't arrested is like a mystery. Thanks, Melanie, for that. Um, where'd you go? <laughs> Thanks, Melanie. I will follow up with Officer yeah. Brown. Yeah, it, it's crazy. Thank you. It's very crazy. I sent He's you back. a email on this. I don't know if you got it. Yeah, Dan, go ahead and unmute. Sorry, you guys. I sent you an email on this. I don't know if you got the email because I did I you send me an email. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. If you sent me an email today, I didn't. I didn't see it. Um, but I, I can, like I said, I can look up this incident yeah. to get more details. We can talk offline about it. Um, okay. I just have to, I just have to pull it because I didn't see also, that. We got to figure out what we're going to do about those bathrooms. The lock is broken. Melanie, so Melanie can this be offline? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's come to order. Typically, the sort of back and forth style is really suited to a committee. Yeah. And this is kind of the report section and maybe a one question and answer. But Armando, if you'd like to ask a question and then perhaps we'll see if we want to move into the port presentation by Michael Cham. Uh, thank you, President. Uh, Officer Brown, how are you doing? This is Armando. Doing good, sir. Doing good, how are you? Um, ate up. I'm ate up, man. I'm totally ate up on things. Mm. Um, today, I watched a news review from Janice Hahn and Channel 11, and she had mentioned that they're putting together, they're working on having a mobile mental health unit to respond to the calls that'll be handled, they will handle the calls instead of LAPD and the sheriff's office. So that way the you know, type of field unit with uh, a mental health person, that they're, they're putting together a fleet of vehicles and they're gonna have the man 24 hours a day and they will be responding to mental health calls. And that was very interesting to hear that today. Hopefully it'll help you all out. Over. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I think there are things in the works, but uh, I don't really have any control over that, for sure. Roger that. I'm done, thank you. Okay, I think we might have seen Gwen. Gwen, do you have a quick question or should we move on to the port? I did have a quick question. Uh, okay. um, thank you, Officer Brown. Um, you, can, you, can you give uh, any information on how the uh, etching of the catalytic converter event uh, went through, you know, uh, and um, also just to, is there anything that we can do as a neighborhood council uh, to try to help initiate? We, we have an extraordinary thing where we have La Rambla, which is that county little pocket. Yeah. And we are, you know, Northwest surrounds it on three sides. And it just, I just think that it would be very good to know some of the crime that happens in that little pocket as well as an inclusivity. Is there anything that we can do yeah. as a neighborhood council to help facilitate the, the sheriff and you guys being able to talk about this? Um, yeah, that, I'll touch on that just because it's fresh in my mind. I, I, that's a good point. I never really thought about that. But yeah, there's a, a fairly significant little portion right in the middle of San Pedro that is under the, the county's jurisdiction. 
And yeah, I don't, I don't get those crime reports. So I, I, I can't say I know anything that's happening in there um, unless I hear about it or unless it spills over. Occasionally there'll be a chase or something that will start there and end in our area or vice versa. Um, but I know that the sheriffs do have like, uh, uh, like a comparative role as like myself. I don't think they're called senior lead officers, but they do have like a li community liaison type officer. And I've seen him be, well, I mean, he's retired now, the one I saw before that he would used to go to um, the Holy Trinity neighborhood watch, I think he, he would go to that one, but I'm sure he's been replaced by another officer at this point. And I haven't done another neighborhood watch up there. So I don't know who that is, but um it's certainly something that you guys could reach out to the sheriffs and try to get a hold of that officer and get that information. Uh, it's certainly something that I think would be beneficial. And then getting to the catalytic converter thing, um, that's still an ongoing problem. I mentioned it last year. I think it was a little worse last year, perhaps. Uh, it really started last year and it continued into 2021. But like I said, oddly enough, the theft from vehicle report numbers are, are down. So I have to assume that overall catalytic converter thefts are, are likely to be down compared to last year. But as you remember, last year was a, it was a big crime increase year as it relates to catalytic converters. And it's still something that's definitely going on. We had four in our area last month. I forgot to mention that in, uh, in my little crime brief, but um, we did do that catalytic converter etching event. 99 cars came out and were, were etched. So I, I, wow. I have yet to come across a loose catalytic converter that um, we can track through that means, but I'm hoping that it will help us to catch some perpetrators of that. So it remains to be seen, but I do know in talking to some of the other slows that we're most likely going to be helping them out in Wilmington to do a similar event. So um, and it may be something that rotates, you know, once a month or something, and we hit uh, San Pedro, Wilmington, and then the Gateway in Harbor City, and then it may come back to San Pedro. So if you missed uh, the first time, just keep your eyes out for another, another event like that. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, Officer Brown. And then that previous issue we might take up in one of our committees, maybe the issues committee or another committee. So we will discuss such things in the future. And now I believe we have Michael Cham from the Los Angeles Harbor Department here to make a presentation. Welcome, Michael. And let's tell us if you have the permission to share and do all the things you need to do and then go ahead, please. Welcome. Thank you. Um, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. So um, I'll be happy to share it once you guys give me the uh, capability to do so. Christian, unmute. Yeah, uh, let me take a look at that. Right okay. Now. Uh, yeah, let's try to do that then. While you're doing that, you know, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Michael Cham. I work for the Waterfront Commercial Real Estate Group here at the Harbor Department. I've been with the Harbor Department for 18 years, um, worked with a lot of you, and I really do want to congratulate the uh, outgoing, continuing, and, and new um, board members here. I am fully appreciative of the fact that you all volunteer your time um, to do these meetings and to support the community, and it's my opinion that if more people cared about the community like you guys do, uh, you all do, um, you know, things would be better than they are now. So I, I'm grateful for, for what you do and I'm happy to be able to present on this item today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and select the screen and try to see if this works. There you go. Let me know if you can see my screen. I see it. Great, so I'm here to talk to you all about the San Pedro Waterfront Connectivity Plan. Many of you know this is something that um, has been strongly advocated for by all the San Pedro neighborhood councils, including Northwest, as well as um, the San Pedro Chamber of Commerce and, and CD15. And, and I'm excited because this is gonna give us a chance to work closely together on this effort, um, especially for those of you who are new or, or newly elected, this will be a great way to, to be onboarded into the LA waterfront and, and what we're doing right now. All right, so my PowerPoint, I'm gonna try to just tell you what the plan is, why we wanna do it now, you know, who's gonna be working on this and um, give an overview of what uh, the RFP will be 
and, and the contents of what we hope this connectivity plan will have and next steps. The San Pedro Waterfront Connectivity Plan, it's a dynamic long-term planning document. We want to build upon what we have now and the objectives we have, and we want to develop a conceptual program that guides future port improvements and private development sites into, we want to connect them all, right, into a network of, of spaces that people can get through, um, the public can get to both um, from each other, from one area within the waterfront to another, and as well as from the community of San Pedro and larger region into the LA waterfront. We want to make sure that we provide the, the ways to do that. And so we, we want to emphasize a few things about the plan. It's a visioning document. So therefore you don't need to build permits, on, um, pull permits on this just yet. You don't have to do SQL analysis. Um, it's gonna be something that we pre prepare for and then implement individually as we go forward. So through that project implementation, as we all know, things change quickly, whether it be the economic market, whether it be permit requirements or applicable laws. And, and everything is subject to, to board discretion through the annual budget process. So, so this plan is gonna have a lot of excellent ideas in it, um, but it is not something that is automatically funded or automatically permitted. Um, all those things uh, need to take place afterwards. And it, of course, it cannot predetermine any future board actions. Why is it important to do this connectivity plan now? You know, the waterfront has been developing. We've been building a lot of infrastructure. We have some existing private developments. And as these things have come on board and as we build them out, they, 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 pre they present new connectivity opportunities. Um, we're gonna focus on San Pedro in this one, but Wilmington will soon be kind of ready for that too as things get further along there. We want to address connectivity for the projects that you know originally weren't even contemplated at the time that we did the 2009 San Pedro Waterfront EIR. You know, um, the downtown San Pedro has developed itself, and we can see better how things are taking shape there and, and the connectivity elements that we want to implement there. We have developments that weren't in the 2009 EIR, like the USS Iowa. We have things that were in that EIR that don't really apply anymore, like the North Harbor Cut, because it's being used for a different purpose. And we've seen significant development, whether it be in West Harbor um, Project, Alta Sea, and, and on both sides, things have changed. Even the redevelopment of Rancho San Pedro um, is, is a connectivity opportunity not originally contemplated. We are looking forward to um, preparing new renderings, new graphics, new maps, this is from the 2009 document and the circled areas just show how um, we need to uh, prepare new renderings, new, new maps that show what's currently there now and, and what we can do in the future. And frankly, uh, this effort is a really significant messaging opportunity. We want to reinforce the vision and, and and explain to the community as well as the development community, the investors, that the port has um, provided significant financial commitment um, to the LA waterfront. We've built out Promenade. We, we, uh, we see a, a burgeoning downtown San Pedro. We want to show them that uh, there will be a thoughtful wayfinding program as things get developed. And we want to just show how the port has delivered on its commitment to invest 10% of its operating income into waterfront projects. And we wanna show uh, everyone and communicate to the public as well as the development community that we have reasonable expectations on implementation of these um, connectivity plans, whether they be market triggers or which projects would tend to come first before others, which ones are higher priorities and when phasing would occur. We think that this is a great opportunity to partner with stakeholders much like yourself um, and develop, strengthen our community support and partnership. This connectivity plan, like I mentioned, was, was uh, unanimously supported in the 2019 outreach pre-COVID by the you know, CD15, the Chamber of Commerce and all the um, neighborhood councils. 
who's on the team, who's going to be doing the, the, gr the grunt work, day-to-day -day work, will be a, a team of port staff, the Waterfront Real Estate Group, our goods movement, engineering, community relations, you guys know Augie. We're going to be managing the effort, but we do intend to bring on a consultant. And our intent is to utilize a consultant, but also utilize the professional services that we have internally. So the technical vehicular traffic analysis, which can be very expensive, um, a lot of the outreach meetings, um, staying up late, and um, all those things. We think that we, we want to keep those things um, in-house as well as utilizing the consultant, but I think we'll be able to save money on, on the overall cost of the, of the project effort. But we do intend to use a consultant, and for that, we will have to release an RFP. We don't have bids back at that this stage, this early stage, so we don't know exactly how much the cost will be, but we anticipate it will be two hundred fifty to five hundred thousand dollars, and the duration should be up to twelve months. Not just because of the development of the plan, but because we intend to incorporate um, input, layers of input, a lot of uh, communication, especially um, through the monthly meeting that we have with the neighborhood council and chamber presidents. So that's why we think the duration may take up to twelve months. So looking at this, um, you know, plan, what's actually going to be in it? What is the consultant going to do? So what I'm going to do is outline uh, what we're asking the consultants to do. They're going to submit their proposals as well as any improvements that they may, they, they may want to suggest. Um, but what we're saying is initially they're going to come on board. We'll do an information review, let them um, understand the history of the LA waterfront. We'll do a tour of the site, uh, kick off workshop internally with port staff, um, then go out and do significant stakeholder engagement, develop the draft plan, present it to the Board of Harbor Commissioners and the public in a public meeting, receive comments from the public and the board, revise the plan, and then come back with a final for action by the board. Now, what are they going to be looking at? What's actually in the, the, the document itself? Again, this is what we intend to put in the RFP and they will come back and give us um, their responses of how they would do it, the consultants would, as, as well as some of their ideas that they have. Um, the contents, of course, would start off with a section that talks about the vision of the LA waterfront, what we have done and the progress we have, we have made to date. We'll <clears throat> have brand new narrative and renderings showing all the current conditions of, of our current destinations, our current open spaces, um, maps about what our road circulation looks like right now, what our, where our bike paths are, what still needs to be developed. And we'll, sh and we'll also show in the overview where we intend to have our new public access projects, when, where we intend to have our new private developers come in, whether it be at the uh, Outer Harbor Cruise Terminal or something in Wilmington where we have uh, at the promenade <clears throat> project. The connectivity elements, the specific things that, that you would expect to see are, you have the non-motorized connectivity elements, bike path, things for scooters, pedestrians, sidewalk widths, crosswalks, landscaping, those elements. Um, then you also have motorized connectivity elements where we discuss public transit, rubber tire trolley, um, which is a, the technical analysis would be done in-house. <clears throat> But also we want to emphasize the, the water side as well. What are the opportunities to connect through the water, whether it be a water taxi? Uh, how can we maximize the opportunity that we have because of the, the large amount of recreational bowling that we have here at the LA Waterfront as well? And wayfinding is, is critical. Uh, what, is, what is the wayfinding program? Uh, how, how do we implement that? Other things that, that we are incorporating into this RFP that we want to let you know about is we want, we want to look for opportunities to incorporate public art. A lot of the larger open spaces um, throughout the nation and really internationally, they use it to have a, a large scale attraction, some sort of public art element that can drive people coming down, can, that can kind of be iconic. We want to explore that idea. We want to look at our open space as well because we're good at building it, but we want to focus on how are we going to utilize and activate it? Uh, how are we going to program it? And what are the mechanisms by which we will program it? And frankly, this is going to be an issue that we debate internally because um, oftentimes there is pressure 
against us not to program it because there's an opinion that it's against the state highlands to, to program it and let's say have like a soccer tournament. And so we wanna utilize this plan to kind of lay the foundation for why it is uh, possible and why there is a good opportunity for that. So all these great ideas are gonna be important, but ultimately implementation is gonna be really important to really clarify and address in, in this document, in this plan. And so in this plan, we'll delineate the port boundaries and what's outside port boundaries and, and what would be port responsibility and what would be a third party responsibility partnership with the city or other agencies. Um, we'll have to talk about timelines. What's a realistic uh, objective threshold that would need to occur for a certain element to occur? Um, what are some of the market triggers that would, that would need to happen before a certain element gets incorporated and implemented as well. So we wanna have very strong emphasis on implementation, timelines, explanation of, of what kind of density you need to, to have a particular water taxi. If you don't have enough people there, the water taxi won't be sustainable, things like that. And, um, and so what are the activations that need to happen prior to implementation of these connectivity plan elements? And so that's kind of what we expect to have inside um, the document. Of course, it's all subject to a process that we hope to uh, have you participate with, um, especially during our monthly meetings with the presidents of the neighborhood councils and uh, chamber of commerces. <clears throat> and we want to come out apart from that meeting as well and be able to give presentations like this to you, uh, get some initial feedback. Really, it's just an invitation to come and, and partner with us on this. And, and we do intend to re release the draft RFP um, probably near the end of this summer or you know, maybe a little at, right after that. And so that's my presentation. I, I, um, I'll be happy to take any questions now, if you have any. Okay, and uh, President Guzman has given me the chair for this particular agenda item. And I would just like very quickly to uh, ask a uh, clarifying question and make a slight comment. Well, so would you say that overall this plan in, in your, your group is, is kind of a, a think tank for the, these sort of big picture land use issues for the port? Um, and are there, in, in terms of an idea pipeline, in terms of things that eventually end up with the, uh, the commissioners, um, is, are, are you guys kind of the main funnel for that? Or are there, do they, you know, like who else might come up with plans like this? Or is this really kind of your wheelhouse? Um, and then the uh, comment would be uh, things like the High Line, that sort of, um, uh, iconic, I guess it was your term, um, are, are really amazing ideas. And I think that's that's one of those things, like if you look at the success of um, uh, Warehouse uh, 9 with Brewery West and with uh, Crafted, you know, things like that, where you take existing sort of port themed infrastructure and turn it into attractions, you know, it's kind of very quickly become a uh, cornerstone for the community. I think ideas like that are uh, a great start and the sort of thing that you should push for. But basically my question was, are there groups other than yours who really funnel these big ideas into the uh, Harbor Commission or is that kind of what you guys are there for like principally? And then we have uh, Gwen and Dan after that. You know, I'm not sure uh, what, what, your, what the question is, but I'll try, try to answer it to the best that I, that I understand. Um, well, it was just, just really like, you know, or do these sort of, uh, I know you're saying these things aren't sort of necessarily uh, approved or funded or, or uh, uh, fully explored, but are there any other groups that would be feeding these types of ideas into the uh, Harbor Department for consideration? Like, are you guys principally tasked with coming up with these sorts of uh, visions? Okay, understood. Okay, so we do, we will be funding project, we will be funding projects, but the initial step before that is to have a document like this by which the projects can kind of um, get tiered off in a sense. And so, so there will be project funding by the Harbor Department and implementation, but this is kind of like the precursor to that. Um, in terms of ideas for the contents, it's a board of Harbor Commissioners um, jurisdiction and we are soliciting ideas. Okay. Um, we are working with, gonna be working with um, stakeholders much like yourself, the council office, the chambers. Um, so the ideas will be funneled through that community outreach process, but ultimately it's the board who approves the policies and the plans um, and, and goes from there. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying they're just principally getting that type of input from you. Are, there's nobody else who really kind of delivers that pipeline of input of ideas. So you're, you're, it's kind of your task to go out and either generate those things or 
find them elsewhere and bring those into the, uh, the board for consideration. Yeah, no one's going to do it for us. We've okay. got to do it ourselves. Yep. Thanks. And uh, I, I'm sorry if I got these uh, folks out of uh, order, but I see Gwen and I see Dan with questions. So Gwen, go ahead. Hello, sir. Um, okay, so from what I understand, could you uh, once again provide uh, the deadline in which you're seeking out input? Um, and as a side note, uh, whichever um, whichever um, uh, committee might be uh, spearheading this within our own neighborhood council, I would like to provide some input on it, especially about water connectivity, the open space, uh, saltwater, freshwater, wetland interface. Uh, there's a lot of hardscaping that has been focused on with these plans, but I believe that the natural the opportunities for natural uh, connectivity between the communities and the port and uh, possible river and um, uh, waterway uh, connectivity, we could, we could uh, provide some input. Uh, so once again, just in review, uh, what is the deadline? And other than our input as a neighborhood council, can you give some other opportunities? Uh, that we can, as stakeholders, uh, participate. Yeah, there's always a tension in terms of wanting to provide enough time for input, as well as I know from my conversations with stakeholders to, to get things out the door and get them started. We wanna make sure that we have time to solicit enough input, but I want you all to understand that the input process will be through the entire duration of the plan. Uh, the participation of the community will not start and end in a month when we release the RFP or, or when or it will not, not end at the point which we release the RFP, but really the conversation and the partnership will be ongoing throughout the entire duration of the plan. For this particular stage, um, we don't anticipate um, releasing the RFP until late in the summer, maybe a little bit after, but it really also depends on how the community uh, responds. Is it like, wait, 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 everybody stop everything? Or is it good job, let's keep going, you know? Or I just have a few comments that I want. So we're kind of gauging the interest from the community as well. The, the primary mechanism that we feel is so productive is actually the, the president's meeting where they can um, monthly meet at the port with our staff and take the feedback that they've received from their stakeholders, whether it be committee or board. The port is happy to participate in those committee discussions as well, but we feel that the, um, the really productive uh, in discussion really happens at that monthly meeting. And so we, we look forward to working with Christian or whoever else will be attending um, for, for you guys. All right, and uh, thanks very much. And we're going to go next to Dan. And I do see that uh, Pat Nave is in. Uh, he's got his hand raised in attendees. So uh, Dan, you're next. Thank you, Michael. I, I just want to take a step back here for my feeble ability to comprehend. Am I correct that what you're talking about in this plan is essentially the connective tissue between the already uh, defined and funded? Uh, developments in the harbor, including all to see the, the market or whatever it's called now, and all the way down to the cruise terminal. And these are the elements that bind those things together. The funding for it comes primarily from the port uh, and, and doesn't, it doesn't accrue to the projects already underway. Is that essentially what I'm hearing? Is that essentially correct? Yeah, you, you are correct. This plan is gonna focus on the connective tissue that will connect the LA waterfront internally and connect the LA waterfront to the community of San Pedro. And that, that connective tissue takes the form of having the right signs out, having the right pedestrian access, having the right landscaping, having the right ability for bikes to come in or the right, uh, the, the, you know, how much parking we're going to need to have, Th things along those lines. That's kind of the connective tissue that I'm talking about. And, and like I was saying to the previous, to answer the previous question, you start with the plan and then you do the implementation. So it's, uh, and it kind of, it is, it's a dynamic plan too. So if things change, then we need to change with it. We can't just 
build build the road to nothing if not if no development happens at a particular spot. And just a quick follow up: that the funding for this comes from a different pot of money, or at least a differently used pot of money than all than that already designated for, say, the the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I was talking about primarily was responsibility for who would be responsible for implementation of certain portions of the plan. And I'll give you an example. So you have the port jurisdiction and you wanna have a certain type of tree. And then you kinda of wanna have that same tree going into this, the community of San Pedro. We would not pay for the, the tree within outside the port's jurisdiction, but then we would still have that plan. So when the funding's available for that, they can build it and there'd be a seamless sort of interface between the two. That would be a very elementary example. So excellent information. And, and obviously the community, this is where the community comes in uh, to, to allow the port to do its job, but uh, really make it a mutual benefit to everybody. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks very much. And uh, we do have two uh, attendees with questions. I see uh, Pat Nave and uh, Augie. Um, and I would just as a quick reminder, I should have brought up earlier, we are approaching, we are about what, 17 minutes from 9 p.m. So uh, if everyone could keep their comments and reactions uh, brief, we do still have a, a, a limited number of items on the rest of our agenda to get to. But I'd like to go yeah. to Pat Nave next. Pat, you're up. Thank you. The idea for a kind of company plan came from the chamber and then uh, was quickly endorsed by the neighborhood councils. And uh, we asked for funding for it out of the port, the PAIP money. Uh, but, but the port has kind of co-opted that plan and has some, uh, op some uh, opportunities for community input, but well-regulated by the port. You know, you could make this a much more open process you could create a working group uh, composed out of the neighborhood councils and the chamber and so forth and provide a lot more guidance. Um, frankly, I haven't been impressed uh, with, his, with what the port does on its own uh, as opposed to what uh, it does when it does it with the community uh, uh, hand in hand, uh, Michael. We've had, this, uh, we've had this discussion before and Augie, if you're still here, we've had this discussion many times in the past. So uh, I'm hoping that the uh, neighborhood council will keep that in mind and insist on a bigger role for it than, uh, than just the president's meeting on occasion when the port decides that it wants to bring something to that uh, group. That's all my comment is. Thanks, Pat. And uh, Augie? Go ahead and unmute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we got you. Where'd you go? We heard you and now we don't. You can hear me. You can hear me now? Yeah, you're on. I just want to say that we'll be uh, tomorrow night at the council. I will be at the joint planning committee meeting of all the neighboring councils. Uh, I believe that meeting starts at 6.30 and Diana Nave chairs the meeting. So we'll be there again tomorrow night. Thanks very much. All right, Mr. President, would you like to take the uh, take the wheel? Yes, thank you, Mr. Vice President. So it is 846 on my timepiece. I think that if it's the pleasure of the board, we should at least get through the consent calendar and also the financial items, and then we will decide if we want to adjourn. So let's move on then. And thank you, Michael. That was an excellent presentation and I look forward to speaking with you in the future. Thank you, sir. Item number 11 is the consent calendar. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. I move. Melanie. Oh. Okay, there's been a, Gwen Henry. Okay, there's been a motion by Madam Treasurer. There's been a second by Gwen Henry to Approve the consent calendar. The single item is the June 2021 board and stakeholder meeting minutes. Make sure. Okay. 
So all those in favor of approving the meeting minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention. Okay, Mr. Goldfarb is abstaining. So the meeting minutes are approved. Okay. Item number 12 is the committee reports and motions. So if there's no objection, perhaps we can take up 12 C and Madam Treasurer can introduce the budget and finance committee items. Mr. President, I'm not sure if, uh, to what it pertains, but uh, Diana Nave has had her hand raised and I wasn't sure if it was something we needed to get to before these other items. Can we uh, check in real quickly? Diana, yeah, she might she might be interested in 12 A or B. So let's we can check in with her. Yes. Diana, you're on. Yeah, I'll, I'll 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 hold my reports until you have time for them. However, I was concerned because Augie uh, mentioned the planning committee meeting, and the planning committee meeting is actually at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, not oh, 6 30 tomorrow. That's good to know. Thank you. And the main agenda item is the connectivity plan. Thank you. Thanks, okay, so we'll return then. Madam Treasurer, would you like to introduce the finance items? Yes, um, just FYI, the only people that can vote for this tonight are the previous board members that have already taken their financial training. Um, Vic, you stated that you've taken your financial training already? Yes, I completed it over the weekend. Okay, then that's fine, you can vote. Um, just one sec. Um, anybody else take their training that's new on the board? You did take it, Angela? Okay. Yeah. Alrighty, so you can vote. And who else? Craig, did you take your training? Oh, wait, no. a quick question. Sorry. I took the training, but I haven't filled out the forms. So I don't know if that's the disclosure okay. forms. Yeah, they won't have it on the thing then the roster thing. Okay, yeah. so I should stay out. Yeah, just okay. for this time and then we'll have sure. it in the system for next one. Okay. And you submitted your paperwork, right Vic? Was, are you talking about the- like, To get the certificate, disclosure or it generated and the certificate for the funding? Yeah, I have all the, I have all three certificates. Okay, that's all you need. Did you get a certificate? Mm -hmm. Angela? Okay, then yes. you can vote. As long as oh. it did a certificate, that's what we need. Okay, we're good. Alrighty. So that being said, everybody can vote except um, Craig. So the first thing, I don't, how are we going to do this? Because Lori usually does screen share the MER and the budget. So what do we do? Chris, are you have that availability to do the screen share? I, have, I think I could promote you, Madam Treasurer. Do you want me to try to promote you? That's fine. That might work. I, I have the technical capacity, but I don't have the document itself. So. Okay. Let me try to promote her. So I've made you the co-host. Maybe okay. that will help. And then I'll screen share. Oops, I guess it would help if I opened it first. And then screen share. Where is screen share? There it is. Okay, there we go. Got it. And then make this a little smaller. Everybody see that? Can they see it? You all see it? We can see it. Maybe you want to zoom in slightly, but we can see it. Okay. All righty. So this is the June MER. This is the final for the fiscal year for 2000 and 2021. Um, we paid out two months of the mail room and we paid the last minute take minutes for um, last month, which closing out the fiscal year, we're going to have $7,431.19 come August time when they give us our rollover money, but that amount's gonna roll over. 
So that being said, this is out of committee. So any discussion regarding the MER? See, any hands? Can you scroll down a little bit so we can see the whole thing? Yeah, it's right there. Thanks. That's the whole thing. Okay. Thank so, you. That being said, um, call the vote. So, Armando? Yes. John? Yep. Barbara? Yes. Victor? Aye. Yes? He or said aye. Aye. Okay. Yes. A-Y-E. Um, may I, let's see, John DeMeglio. Yes. Dan Dixon. Yes. Um, Cynthia. Yes. Christian. Guzman. Oh, yes. You have, wait, have you done your training? Well, I did it last year when I was on Northwest for like a week. So I'm, I'm not sure if that one's still active. So I'm just going to abstain. Okay. I'll abstain to be on the safe side. Gwen? Yes. Melanie, yes. Kelly? Yes. Angela? Yes. And Chris Vallier? Yes. And Adrianita? Yes. Okay. Then the next. This is our budget. This is closing us out. Uh, quick, quick comment. Um, I checked the official website and it says Christians is good till 22. So oh, they, yes. uh, apparently okay. he's good. Well, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Okay. So, all righty. So Christian, yes. <laughs> we'll change that. Um, so the next item is the budget. This is our closeout for fiscal year 2020-2021. Um, again, it shows here at the bottom, our rollover amount is $7,431.19, um, which will be great to add to our 32000 that we get for the budget next year. So it'll give us almost 40000 to have for next year. <coughs> Out of committee also in discussion. Okay, so we'll call for the vote. Um, Armando. Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. John Barbera. Yes. Victor. Yes. Um, John DeMeglio. Yes. Dan Dixon. Yes. Cynthia. Yes. And um, Christian Guzman. <laughs> Yes. Gwen. Yes. Melanie um, Kelly. Yes. Angela. Yes. Chris Fallier. Yes. And Adrianita. Yes. Okay. Mr. President, that's it. Excellent. Thank you, Madam Treasurer. Typically, we could go until nine o'clock, so we could give one more report, or if there's a, I could entertain a motion to adjourn and we will see you all at a retreat. So what, what is the pleasure of the board? Um, so moved. Mr. President, can I make a comment? One thing I wanna recognize is that this month, almost every committee did not have meetings. So there should be no reports for any committee other than maybe bylaws and maybe, I think everybody else was dark. Okay. Mr. Council I, Member I, Dixon, I, I, did you make a motion? I made, I made a motion, I so moved it. Uh, we do see okay. the hands. Can we get a second? Is there a second to adjourn the meeting? Second. Okay. There's been a motion to adjourn, there was a second. All those in favor of adjourning the meeting till next month, say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
No. Diane and Dave's hands up. Yeah, Diana's hand has been raised. Budget and um, the bylaws and election did have did have a report. Okay. There, there was a motion on the board yeah. on the floor. Did it pass or not? Yeah, thank thank you, Council Member Goldfar. There was a motion. There was a second. We can have discussion on it, or we could we could vote. We Diana, already, unless unless you really want to give that report, I think we're going to adjourn the meeting. I was going to give a very brief report, not the one I had planned, but I did want to give a brief report. If that's okay. Report. The point okay. of order, President, we had a motion, we had a vote. It's either the motion, either we were following the rules or we're not. Point of yeah. order, we did not have yeah. comment, we did not have a, a comment on it before we took the vote. Yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate that. Council Member Goldfarb and Councilwoman Henry. If there's no object, well, let's take, let's finish taking the vote. And if, if we want to vote in the negative, we can take the report and then we'll adjourn it after. So those who would not like to adjourn, say nay and say it loud. Nay. 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 Okay. Nay. So we'll take up, we'll take up the report and then we will see if we want to adjourn after that then. So I'm going to. I'm going to give a really brief report then. The first thing is that we have, as you know, two vacancies. They're both in the Vista del Oro area. Today we received um, four applications, one of whom was ineligible because the address was in the Averill area, not the Vista del Oro area. But applications are, are due um, August 2nd, so there, there may be more. And if you know anyone that's interested in applying, the application is on our website. Um, have some statistics on the election, and I won't go over that. But the the committee is gathering information on what worked well and what problems you encountered during the election. And so, if you have any comments on that, if you would just email them to me, um, we can add them to the list, and we'll be putting together to bring back to the next board meeting a, a draft letter with that. And the other thing that we're gathering information on is any bylaws changes that people are aware of that think they need to be made. So that's, that's the brief report. And I just want to say one thing out of my planning report, if I may. Um, Go ahead. Go ahead. And, and again, I had prepared a much longer presentation. But the one thing I think is important is the city's in the process of updating their, their housing element of the city's general plan. And there's, there's a lot of things in there that you might want to be aware of. And the, the, the last webinar on it is tomorrow. The information on how to access that webinar is on our website. What was the name of the site, Diana? It's called, well, it's called the Plan to House LA. Um, the, it, it's the housing element of the city's general plan as required by the state law. Okay. This is where the city okay. has to show how it's going to accommodate 450,000 new housing units over the next seven years. All right, got it, thanks. What time Thank you, Diana. We did, there was an email sent out by the Northwest San Pedro Neighborhood Council on it. So we can find that invitation on the internet or in your emails. If you're subscribed, check out our website. Email Diana if you have a question, if you have her email. We are at and past nine o'clock. Let's try this again. We're learning together. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, there was it was moved. Okay, we heard a few seconds. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We are adjourned. Let's get together. Let's have a retreat. Or we could have a special meeting and discuss how we can become more effective. So I will see you, and it's been a pleasure so far to know you. And hope to get to know you better. Welcome, Good night, everybody. Thank you, Good night. Mr. President. Good night. Bye, bye. Good night, Good night, Good night Mr. President. Chair. Later. Night. Night. Bye. 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 Bye